have you covered on KSL News Radio. I know it's Thursday, but give me 60 seconds and I'll explain how spending $29 guarantees your air conditioner won't break down this summer or we'll give you your money back. What's up, everybody? I'm Mike Wilson with Any Hour Services, and when you have Any Hour do the annual maintenance for your air conditioner, it comes with our no breakdown guarantee 801 443 7400. Normally, we charge $129 to tune up your air conditioner, but not today. If you call today, Thursday, April 11th, and mention you heard this ad, we'll give you $100 off and tune up your air conditioner for only $29. 801-443-7400. If your AC breaks down any time this summer after we've tuned it up, we'll dispatch a technician to your home to diagnose and troubleshoot your system for free. And we'll give you back the $29 you paid for the tune-up. Where else are you going to find an offer with this little risk? You literally get your money back if your air conditioner breaks down. Call any hour services and schedule your $29 air conditioner tune-up. 801-443-7400. You can Google Any Hour Services. You can even schedule online at anyhourservices.com. It's going to be here before you know it. Here comes summer, like a wave of change. So the weight loss wants to help you look amazing in your swimsuit and shorts, but you got to get started right now at sodaweightloss.com. No time? Try Soda's at-home program with all the support you need online. I didn't realize how unhealthy I was. When you start losing the weight, even that first five pounds, this enormous amount of confidence starts to build in you. You start to realize like, oh, this is possible for me. That's Lauren, and she's let go of 35 pounds with soda. With their help, I let go of 37 pounds, and I've kept it off for over two years now. That's because soda works. It's absolutely changed my life. Soda helps you break food addictions and get healthy for the rest of your life. It's why they have more than 8,700 Google reviews and countless before and after pictures and videos of people living the results every single day. Go to SotaWeightLoss.com. That's S-O-T-A WeightLoss.com. Hot Tub Factory Outlet and Backyards of America is offering an incredible deal. We'll pay the sales tax on every hot tub, swim spa, infrared sauna, and cold plunge sold. Now through April 15th, say goodbye to pesky extra charges and hello to unbeatable savings. We're your local hotspot for hot tubs, swim spas, infrared saunas, and cold plunge. We're not just any store. We're two local guys dedicated to bringing you the best prices and selection around. Step into our showroom and be amazed. We have hot tubs, swim spas, and saunas in every size, color, and model imaginable. From cozy two-seaters to luxurious party size tubs and the largest showroom of swim spas. When you buy local, you're not not just getting a great deal you're getting top-notch service too with our in-house service technician help is just a phone call away because we believe in making your hot tub and swim spa experience as magical as possible hot tub factory outlet conveniently located next to Calabunga bay and backyards of america in sandy traffic and weather together again brought to you by sinclair's dino pay app save up to 20 cents a gallon how are we looking out there, Heather? Well, Utah County drivers are still very slow coming out of Provo, out of the S-curves up to the University Parkway exit in Orem. That is due to a crash on that exit ramp. And then as you go from Timpanogos Highway in Lehigh all the way into downtown Salt Lake, most of that distance is under the speed limit. And you still have delays on the 201 freeway eastbound between 5600 West and the West Side Belt. With Two Brothers Mattress low price guarantee and their 100-night trial, you, your locally owned Two Brothers Mattress is your number one choice for sort of mattresses. Learn more at twobrothersmattress.com. Heather Kelly in the KSL Traffic Center. I'll tell you, the only thing not to like about this forecast getting to the weekend is how quickly we're going to warm up here with the fear of how quickly that uh, water and snowpack may come down. The good news is we go from 72 to 78 to 76, and by the end of the seven-day period, it's just what the doctor ordered for that runoff uh, pattern. We're going to be back down to uh, 51 degrees by midweek next week, so that's uh, good news. Right now, 48 and sunny in Salt Lake City from the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. I'm Tim Hughes. Listen online at kslnewsradio.com, Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Dave and Dejanovic, your morning companions for talk, analysis, and key perspectives on Utah's biggest stories on KSL News Radio. From football star to convicted felon, OJ Simpson is dead at the age of 76. Dave and I are going to um, spend a few minutes talking about how he will be most remembered, um, likely not for all of the yardage he gained during his NFL career, but more or less the fact that he skated in the 90s, um, not getting the conviction for 
the murder of his wife and her friend Ron Goldberg, uh, ex-wife. I, I should say. Yeah, I, I was so I was so shocked on so many levels because O.J. Simpson was not just enorm- an enormous star because he was a great football player. He was an actor. He was charming. He was all of these things. And then when the murders happened, everything changes. And I don't think there's any question. Nobody remembers. Nobody thinks about his football career. Nobody thinks about his movie career. No one thinks about that. When you say O.J. Simpson, immediately you get a pit in your stomach and you remember that those two murdered individuals never got their justice. It's 9.07. It's time for the launch. Sequence engaged. And here are three things that Debbie wants you to know. Countdown three. Well, Joseph may have come too late for Ron and Nicole, but eventually he landed himself in prison. O.J. Simpson, dead of cancer at the age of 76. Uh, His family posting that to X. Certainly his tumultuous life after the NFL is what I'll most remember him for. Uh, The infamous slow-speed pursuit in that white Bronco after the murder of his ex-wife and her friend Ron Goldman. Um, Of course, found not guilty at his widely watched and televised trial. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder in violation of Penal Code Section 187A, a felony upon Nicole Brown Simpson, a human being, as charged in count one of the information. I will never forget that gasp. When that was announced, you can hear an audible gasp at the reading because it was such a shocking verdict. Countdown to locally the International Olympic Committee continuing its tour of Utah today to put I think what's going to be an explanation point on our bid to bring the games back to 2034. They're touring some of the the venues uh, where events will be held. And I wonder if expanding tracks and front runner are part of the uh, 30,000 foot up plan uh, as 2034 closes in. Uh, we're going to talk live to UTA. Um, if this Olympic sized push will be a win for Utah commuters, too. They're calling the show a little later, Dave. As much as it may feel like a, a repeat, this is a completely different game. Uh, the population of Utah, I, there's a lot of moving parts, and I think public transit could play an absolutely crucial role, not just for the games, but for Utahns in general for the decades to come. Launch countdown one. Speaking of moving parts, when are we going to move the Arizona Coyotes uh, to Salt Lake City? It was initially a wish that turned into a rumor that seems to be coming a reality. And we're going to take a deep dive uh, into the prospect that NHL hockey is likely coming to SLC. But when? And bring NHL hockey to Salt Lake City in time for puck drop in October. Can you believe that? Six months out there talking about bringing hockey by October? I need six months to move out of my own house. This is a billion-dollar organization, 500 miles away, hundreds of employees, not just the star players. It's the Zamboni driver that just had his life turned upside down. Dave and Janovic. The launch. Commence. We're going to begin with our developing story, and that is that former NFL Superstar turned convicted felon, O.J. Simpson, is dead of cancer at the age of 76. And it felt like to me that Nicole and Ron finally got their justice many years later after they were both found dead. Um, When Simpson was caught and found guilty of armed robbery in Las Vegas, he was sentenced to 33 years behind bars. And I thought, finally, It's caught up to you, and I think a lot of people felt the same way. But he was paroled early, which, you know, he was granted parole in 2017. And what shocked me is when he went before the parole board in Nevada and continued to spin the story. When I came into the room, I I noticed spread out everywhere (laughs) was my personal property. 
You know, the only thing I saw that was on display that wasn't mine was some baseballs, and I made it clear to everybody, those are not mine. All I want is my property, and I, I think there's a tape of it. You hear me on at least three or four occasions say, I just want my property. Yeah, it's armed robbery inside a Las Vegas hotel room trying to get his memorabilia back. Well, he was convicted, served uh, to 33 years, served not quite that much, maybe a third of it. Doesn't this feel like the whole Al Capone thing? Like everybody knows what happened with OJ, but they got him on almost a technicality armed robbery. But it was the murders that we care about. It, it, sure, we got Al Capone for tax evasion, but everyone knew what is going on behind the scenes. So, yeah, it feels like some sort of justice on some level because he went to prison, but he murdered these people. And everyone knew it in this country, and he got off. Well, what convinced me may have not even been the fact that, um, I, you know, what happened before the jury, but it was the slow-speed car chase uh, that he engaged in in that white Bronco so many years ago after his ex-wife and her friend uh, Ron were found dead. You can only assume that he plans to get off at sunset and go towards perhaps his home. I mean, it is an amazing sight. Uh, along the right-hand shoulder, people have pulled over, many of them carrying <laughs> signs such as signs reading things like Save the Juice, Go OJ. People are literally cheering him on. I was sitting there watching it that night. I went home from work at Channel 4 News here in town, and it was on television. It was the only thing on television, and I sat there and watched that unfold, and I thought, what a way to scream you're guilty, dude. And then he was found not guilty to the shock of so many. To give you an idea of what an impact this was on the United States in general, I remember who was driving the white Ford Bronco, Al Cowlings. I mean, that's the kind of investment we had as this country. We knew who the driver of the white Ford Bronco was. Here's Larry King, uh, the night of that o OJ car chase, that infamous car chase. This is Interstate 5, and this is courtesy of KCALR, one of our L.A. affiliates. Police believe that, that O.J. Simpson is in that car. Okay. Police believe he is in that vehicle. At this point, that uh, the, the officers would do just about whatever they do in any type of a, of a now pursuit. Now they're telling me that they, be to, they believe that this vehicle is registered to Al Cowling's, uh, one of uh, O.J.'s oldest friends, a teammate at Southern Cal. He had it all. And then he had nothing at all. And now he's dead at the age of 76 of cancer. What a way to go from fame to felon. I mean, Dave, what what are your thoughts? You're a big sports guy. You've been in the sports world for so long before you um, you know, started this show with me. What are your thoughts about him? How will you remember him? Of course, great football player. None of it matters. No one will remember anything. He's basically been erased from sports memory because it was, it was such a horrific crime and the fact that justice was not served – he has been erased largely. You just don't hear it in the sports worlds. When you talk about the all-time greats, which technically he was, technically he was, his name never pops up because of the stain of the murders. Next, let's get into some happy news. Uh, let's talk about the NHL coming to SLC. This is developing rapidly. It's not done, but I'm told that they've made significant and meaningful progress on Dave and Dujanovic. You know KSL is the only news radio for your car, right? The only news radio for your smart speaker. Come here in the morning. It's the latest news and traffic. In the afternoon, news and updated weather. We have you covered at KSL News Radio. There are products that offer up to a 20% upfront bonus just for opening an account and up to 12% per year for retirement income. I'm Jeff Jr. with Trajan Wealth, and I've heard from other advisors saying this is too good to be true. No, it's not. We are one of the few who can offer products like these because we're independent. We're not registered with a broker-dealer who tells us what we have to sell, and we don't have to answer to a board of directors who prioritize shareholders over clients. So, is an upfront bonus up to 20% and 12% per year growth for income too good to be true? For most advisors, yes, but not Trajan Wealth. The fact that many of our clients come 
from other financial advisors is a testament to our value. Experience the Trajan Wealth difference for yourself. Call 801-899-7600. That's 801-899-7600. Guarantees are based on the claims paying ability of the issuing insurance. Want to know what is grinding things to a halt in Congress? We have to face reality right now. You should have been listening to Inside Sources and Boyd Matheson's interview with Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson. We literally are operating right now with the smallest majority in the history of the Congress. When it came to funding the government, we either get the best possible product we can or we just shut the government down. For firsthand information from Inside Sources, listen each day. Boyd Matheson from 1 to 3 on KSL News Radio. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile, and the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time, there's Granger, offering professional grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones, who get it done. Shop our best savings for spring during Spring Fest at Lowe's. Right now, get a free leaf blower and select combo kits and stock up on soil for all your gardening projects. Get three bags of three-quarter cubic foot miracle Grow garden soil free when you buy three because Lowe's knows home improvement. Offers valid through 417. Compared to trimmer purchased separately. Blower and trimmer sold packaged together as combo kit. Includes one battery and charger. miracle Grow offer excludes Alaska and Hawaii while supplies last. Hi, everyone. It's Congressman Blake Moore here. Representing Utah's priorities in Congress and providing top-notch constituent services at the heart of everything Team Moore does. We've had great success helping Utahns with expedited passports, visa processing, veterans' benefits, immigration petitions, retirement issues, tax returns, and much more. If you need help navigating a federal agency, including the IRS, Social Security, the VA, Immigration Services, or Medicare, please give my office a call at 801-625-0107. That's 801-625-0107. We're also happy to help coordinate U.S. Capitol tours, take your comments, and provide legislative updates anytime. I also want to invite you to sign up for my weekly e-newsletter. We are soon entering what is called the political blackout period leading up to the primary election, meaning my office cannot reach out with updates and announcements unless you are subscribed to our communications. So sign up today at blakemore.house.gov. It's our honor to serve you and your family in Congress. Thank you. Paid for by official funds authorized by the House of Representatives. This joyful sound is the No More Chemo Bell at Intermountain Health St. George Hospital. And it means that Sarah Parker beat cancer. It also means her doctor spotted it early enough to treat and that her oncologist helped her fight it every step of the way. It means that her nurse helped her keep track of medicines and that a case manager made the whole experience just a little bit easier. Every time we hear that bell, it reminds us that all things are possible when we work together. It reminds us of the power of we. Intermountain Health. You know that feeling? Your air conditioner starts making a weird noise, but you don't know if that's a typical weird noise or potentially expensive weird noise. And you just want somebody smart to come and look at it and maybe get things back to when you had perfectly good air conditioning without a stupid weird noise. Whipple that away. Making weird sounding air conditioners quiet again is my job. Make your problem my problem. Whipple Service Champions. Look for our special offers at whipplethataway.com. Common Spirit Health. Hospitals, clinics, and caregivers all connected to advance health care in Colorado, Kansas, and Utah. Health care with human kindness is here. Hello, human kindness. Our KSL News Radio app was one of the first to break the news that OJ Simpson is dead at the age of 76 after a cancer battle. Um, be in the know. All you have to do to be in the know is download the free KSL News Radio app. It takes just seconds to download it. You can take us with you everywhere you go, set your notifications, and bing, there you get the alert when the big story breaks. With the three things you need to know this hour, I'm Tim Hughes. First, O.J. Simpson is dead at the age of 76. His family says he succumbed to his battle with cancer. Second, Panguitch residents gathered to hear an update on the state of the Panguitch Lake Dam last night. Leaders say things aren't back to normal, but the dam is doing better. And third, it's day two in the murder trial of Chad Daybell. The first witness will continue his testimony today. 
We're going to shoot for a high today of uh, 72 degrees, and right now in Salt Lake City, it's 48. Back to Dave and Dujanovic on KSL News Radio. Dave and Dujanovic. Dave and DeGenevic. Dave and DeGenevic. Special coverage of the top local story. Okay, we want to set the scene uh, for NHL, uh, you know, pro hockey team moving to Salt Lake City. Probably, most likely, out of Arizona. Um, we're going to do that with the help of Frank Saravalli. He is uh, the president of the Hockey Writers Association. And he has been all over uh, the news, not only here, he's on uh Talked about it last night on KSL 5 television, but also in Phoenix about this pending move that we think is going to happen any day now um, from, you know, Arizona moving the Coyotes team here to Utah. He joined um, Hans and Scotty on uh, 97.5, the KSL Sports Zone, with the latest info. This is developing rapidly. It's not done, but I'm told that they've made significant and meaningful progress on what would be the framework of an agreement to sell the Arizona Coyotes franchise ultimately to Ryan Smith and the Smith Entertainment Group. And we learned just yesterday that the National Hockey League had prepared two different sets of schedules for the Coyotes, one with them playing in Arizona and staying, the other with them playing in Salt Lake. That was major, massive news because it takes it from rumors to, okay, Mm -hmm. this is entirely possible. Now, I do want to say, deals fall apart. Recently, after years of negotiation, the Minnesota Timberwolves, just barely, they were going to sell to Alex Rodriguez and his group, you know, the former baseball player. They were going to sell for $1.5 billion. This barely fell through when the Wolves owner, Glenn Taylor, just ripped the rug out from under them. So this may be progressing very well right now, but history has shown Mm -hmm. these things can fall apart. So at our level, it's like trying to buy a home, to negotiate for a home, and then at the last minute, the rug gets pulled out from under you as a buyer. It looks good. Everything's, (laughs) oh, your (laughs) pre-qualification didn't come in. Sorry. All right. Uh, I know there's. it sounds like there's just a ton of stuff going on behind the scenes. Uh, there's also been a lot of discussion in the media about this. A lot of people uh, on public forums chiming in as well. Hockey fans all in on this. And Sarah Velli, um, his he's the one that broke the story about the two different draft versions of the schedule um, coming out between um, the maybe Coyotes playing here in Salt Lake City or playing uh, next season, which starts in October, in uh, Phoenix at that tiny little stadium they're at, at Arizona State University, my alma mater. Mullet Arena. Get away. Run. Run while you can. Stop being pushed all over the desert, Coyotes. Uh, Come up here where the mountains are beautiful, and we would welcome you and fill the house. We'd bring down the Delta Center. We'd be so excited to have you. But he writes for the Daily Faceoff, and he says, they're almost there. Just crossing the T's and dotting the I's stage. Well, now you've scared me, Dave, but let's listen to what Frank has to say. The three sides are either very close or have a, you know, an actual agreement in place that basically needs to be papered and signed and lawyered. So a lot of work still to do, but it's advanced to a stage where you know, a lot of people feel comfortable in saying behind the scenes that this is going to happen. The three sides that he's talking about is, of course, Ryan Smith here in Utah, uh, the Coyotes owner, Alex Morello, and then the NHL as well. The league itself has to be involved in this. And he's reporting also that the league has reached out to the Coyotes players to give them a heads up, Mm. to say, hey, this is in the works, this is a possibility, to be prepared because you are moving an entire franchise, Mm -hmm. all the players – All the staff, this is hundreds of people. So where I sit from here in Salt Lake City, I I really don't care too much about what this means uh, for the current owner of the Coyotes down there in Phoenix, Alex Murillo. Um, But maybe this does play into the equation as to whether he decides to uh, go through with the deal or pull the plug on the deal. The owner of the Coyotes, he's doing this under his own free will, um, and he's at least according to my source is going to be paid handsomely to do it. I believe he's going to get 
upwards of a billion dollars in order to make this sale happen. And so for someone that I believe the purchase price was in the 300 to $400 million range, that's pretty good business. He could make $800 million on this sale. And the Coyotes have gone through so much over the years. They've changed ownerships. They've moved arenas. This is not a long history standing owner like the Millers. This is what we're used to here in Utah, where the Millers owned the Jazz for forever, and they sold it to somebody with with deep ties. This is this is a businessman, and it, the fact that you could turn a profit of hundreds of millions of dollars just speaks to how likely this is to happen. Well, I hope it entices him to sell. I hope it entices him to sell to Ryan Smith, and I hope it means that we'll get the team here soon. I hope it, we get him here by October. Re- reading um, that they would play in the Delta Center uh, at least for a while until they could figure things out in terms of maybe a multi-purpose stadium. Uh, maybe it's not an ideal location, but let's just get the ball rolling on this. I think it's super exciting. I think it's exactly what Salt Lake City needs. I feel like Salt Lake City has uh, been dwindling in terms of nightlife and excitement and cool and fun things to do downtown ever since the pandemic. I just haven't felt the spark in Salt Lake City since 2020. It's kind of flatlined for me. So I say bring it on. And between that and mirror and pep and also mirroring that with or uh, pairing that with a major league baseball team on the not far from downtown. I know that's going to take a few years, but revitalizing that part of town as well. We're growing up now. It's time with to stop with the small lake city mentality. Oh, let's just keep it. Bring on NHL. Let's show them we can pack the house. Let's show them that we can bring the fans downtown. Let's build up some new restaurants in this area. Let's get the outdoor dining scene going. Please, let's get the outdoor de- uh, dining scene going. We are the perfect. We are the perfect city for that you know, kind of vibe. And we've just never capitalized on it. One of the tricky parts about this is the NHL plays in the fall, winter, and spring. So that isn't the best time to bring everybody downtown and do outdoor dining. Sure it is. It's a better time to do it. (laughs) Yes, it is. You like it. Throw some heaters out there. Absolutely. Well, they've got, they've got solutions for that now. They've got heaters. They've got those plastic roll down shades. I mean, (laughs) let's stop making excuses for being boring. Let's build this city up. And T minus seven days, according to Cerevelli, the announcement could come as soon as next Thursday. Next Thursday. So while we're all in the middle of the great shakeout drill on Thursday, April 18th, the crowd will be going wild with this announcement. I hope it comes before then. I don't know if I can wait this long. But I know, Dave, you're coming at this from a completely different mindset. Yeah, I'm looking at it as we've had hockey in Utah. We've had baseball. In ho- it's minor league. We can't fill up those stadiums. Are we really going to be able to fill up a stadium that's two, three, four times the size. Well, you got to. You can't just stop being Debbie Downer. You got to give us some solutions and how we're going to get there to fill up a stadium next. Nine thirty at KSL News Radio. I'm Tim Hughes with a look at some of our top stories this hour. People in Panguitch area gathered last night to get the latest update on that crack in the Panguitch Lake Dam. KSL News Radio's. Peter Johnston has been following that story. Tim, Penguin's leaders say the dam isn't fixed, but it has gone... From 8 degrees till the downstream to now 2 degrees till the downstream. So the wall has rotated back towards the reservoir, and we see that as a positive sign. That's Utah Division of Water Rights Assistant Engineer Everett Taylor. He says workers are cutting the ice and draining the lake as fast as safely possible. Penguin's Mayor Kim Soper has experiences bringing the community together. I've had so many calls. Of people wanting to help. If the plan works, water levels will fall below the crack in the dam around the end of next week. Peter Johnston, KSL News Radio. Ready.gov has some tips in case you're ever faced with an evacuation like the Panguitch community. 
Always have a, a at least half a tank of gas when a completely full tank is preferable. Then make a plan where you're going to go, and before you leave, make sure you've notified someone of your plans. Also, stay up to date on road closures and weather conditions. Families should have a designated meeting place in case they ever get separated. Fewer Americans applied for jobless benefits last week. The latest report out this morning shows the number of people looking for benefits went down by 11,000 people compared to the week before. Your money at this moment, the markets uh, continue to be mixed. We're down 212 on the Dow. That's about a half a percent following the losses yesterday. The S&P is down just five. The NASDAQ tech stocks are actually up a bit, closing in on a gain of 60 this hour. Nothing to complain about really in the weather, just concerned about how quickly that warm weather might bring down our snowpack. We'll check traffic and weather together next. KSL News Time 932. You know what's great about KSL's traffic coverage? Trained traffic reporters and real listeners. Trading information and making the commute safer and faster for everyone. Every 10 minutes on the nines. We have you covered on KSL News Radio. If you're looking around your house and you see Maybe a need for some ceiling fans, some extra lights. Maybe your smoke detector is no longer working and you're starting to worry a little bit. Call Master Electrical. Yeah, I mean, you got to have a working smoke detector. That'll save your life uh, if anything bad happens. So Master Electrical is your go-to. They've got this upfront pricing guarantee. I think you're really going to appreciate that, especially if you've ever been bitten by bids. I mean, you know how you have people come into your home, they give you a bid, and then suddenly the price goes up and up and up, and you're like, how far up is that going to go? Uh, that does not happen with Master Electrical, thanks to their upfront pricing guarantee. I hate when I get smacked with the upcharges, and that's something that Master Electrical has addressed. Their system simply won't even allow an upcharge. What you get bidded is what you get charged. Uh, in your luck, if you live in Logan to Santa Gwen, Master Electrical proudly serves lots of Utah cities, and they're always open, even for emergency services. 801-543-2222. That's 801-543-2222. Or you can always check Every them minute. out online at masterelectrical.com. We received notices Dave from the IRS. and Dujanovic. Dave and Debbie go out of their way to make sure you hear all sides of a story. They're working the phones to get several viewpoints on for you. Hi, it's Tim and Amanda. We get you the full story, too. We have you covered on KSL News Radio. Listen. Listening to inside sources is a little different from just reading the headlines because we're always going to get you into that think again moment. We have experts from around the country, across the world, and right here, local to home, that'll help us dive in and get past just the hype, the fluff, the fake fights, and the false choice so we can get into the news to help you connect the dots and make the news make sense. Join Inside Sources with Boyd Matheson, 1 to 3, on KSL News Radio. Every business faces challenges, but complicated, expensive, and uncertain shipping shouldn't be one of them. With USPS Ground Advantage from the United States Postal Service, you can avoid all the noise. No more unexpected surcharges, hidden fees, or complex rate structures. It's just easy, cost-effective, and dependable shipping. Tune your business's frequency to success and turn shipping to your advantage. Learn how at usps.com advantage. USPS Ground Advantage. Simple, affordable, reliable. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile. And the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger, offering professional grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, clickgranger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Are you stressing about your IRS tax problems? Have you received notices from the IRS threatening to garnish your wages, levy your bank accounts, or seize your property? You need an ally. Allies Tax Relief has tax attorneys and enrolled agents that are ready to fight for you. They have saved millions for taxpayers just like you. Allies Tax Relief can help put a stop to IRS collections and, most importantly, negotiate your tax debt. Here's Brenda, a happy client of Allies Tax Relief. I owed the IRS around $57,000, and they're about to start garnishing my paychecks. I heard a commercial on the radio about Allies Tax Relief, so I thought I'd give them a call. After a day, they were able to at least stop the garnishments, and after a few months of negotiations, I walked away owing the IRS only $301. 
If you owe the IRS, call Allies Tax Relief right now for your free consultation. Call 800-230-5174. 800-230-5174. That's 800-230-5174. Traffic and weather together back again, brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. What's it look like, Heather? We still have excessive delays for people in Utah County on northbound I-15, trying to exit at University Parkway in Orem. This is due to a crash on that exit ramp, and traffic is backed up onto main flow of northbound 15, so you'll see those delays coming out of the S-curves from Provo. No matter what kind of car you drive, two things are always true. All tires eventually need replacing, and all vehicles need servicing. For quality service you can trust, visit your Utah Big O Tires, the team you trust. I'm Heather Kelly with traffic in KSL News Radio. Going to be a sunny day today, highs in the 70s. Matter of fact, 72 today, 78 tomorrow, 76 on Saturday, all of those above normal. And by uh, midweek next week in the seven-day forecast, right back to 50 degrees, which is perfect if we want to keep an eye on that snowpack coming down too quickly. Right now, we're not far off of that expected high. It's 52 degrees from the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. I'm Tim Hughes. Listen online at kslnewsradio.com, Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. We have a developing story, and then we also have some breaking news that we got to get to. We've just learned uh, that former Salt Lake City Mayor Ted Wilson uh, has died. Um, A statement from the family says he was surrounded by family um, and that he died, passed away at the age of 84 due to congestive heart failure and also complications from Parkinson's disease. Uh, Of course, our condolences to current Salt Lake County Mayor Jenny Wilson. That was her father. Um, He served honorably for many years as the mayor of Salt Lake City, um, and we will continue our ongoing coverage of that development this morning. And now we're on to breaking news. Um, Our breaking news is out of uh, the Cedar City area. I want to make sure I get this right, Dave. We've got a lot of information coming at me all at once, but let's start with Southern Utah University. They are on alert right now. Uh, They had a, according to SUU, and Caitlin, just give me a yes in my ear. Make sure this is confirmed before I report it. Is this confirmed through SUU's website? This is on SUU's website. Uh, They have suspicious, as they received a suspicious phone call regarding the possibility of an active shooter on the campus in Cedar City. So all SUU facilities are on lockdown. Police are on the scene and investigating. Uh, They're saying a suspect is not in custody. Um, So they're advising right now, if you're on the campus of SUU, of course, uh, sometimes our our signal reaches down there, but certainly a lot of people on the Wasatch Front have family members who attend school down there. They're saying follow lockdown procedures, go to the nearest room and lock the doors. Um, If you're not on campus, stay away from campus. So SUU now reporting that they've got a phone call regarding some the possibility of an active shooter at Southern Utah University in Cedar City. Uh, the Iron County School District also saying all schools in the Cedar City area, every single school in the Cedar City area are, are on secure action uh, due to a police incident occurring at SUU. Dave, I'm going to turn it over to you, see if I can find some more information right now on this secure action. I'm on the SUU website right now, and the latest update came just four minutes ago. So at 9.36 a.m. where they talk about this suspicious phone call regarding the possibility of an active shooter on the SUU campus. Uh, again, we have not been able to to confirm whether or not this is actually happening or if this is just precautions being taken by the university. Of course, Cedar City, a good three and a half hours uh, outside of Salt Lake City, but uh, the Cedar, the school district there uh, saying that Cedar High School, South Elementary, East Elementary are in a secure action due to a police incident in the area occurring outside of the building. Uh, So that goes back to, we think, could be related to the SUU situation that's going on. Uh, and they're saying, as a precaution, all doors are locked. No one can leave or enter the building. Uh, classes will continue uninterrupted inside the building, um, and students may not be able to leave the school building for classes off campus, promising to communicate more information as it becomes available. 
Are we? Uh, I know police are very busy right now. I'm wondering if we've been on the police uh, Twitter account or anything uh, coming out of the Cedar City Police Department or maybe the Iron County Sheriff's Office down there. Caitlin, if you can continue to keep our uh, searches going all um, online, all platforms, and figure out if we can get a little bit more information. You've got more, Dave? No, just a reminder, it was about this time last year when we had a similar suspicious phone call uh, to several schools. I'm thinking specifically of the Spanish Fork High School where a, a similar active shooter hoax call was made and police arrived. They did the same kind of lockdown. Again, I have no idea if this is a hoax or not, but uh, it, it does remind me of what was happening about this time last year within just a, a couple weeks. I want to make sure that you know we're tracking this developing story where we received a, an alert out of Southern Utah University down in the Cedar City area saying that they have a suspicious phone call happen regarding the possibility of an active shooter on campus in Cedar City. All U- SUU facilities are to be on lockdown, the statement says. Police are on the scene and investigating a suspect not in custody. And if you're on campus, you know somebody who attends school there, they are to be following lockdown procedures, go to the nearest room and lock the doors. If they are not on campus, they are told to stay away. Also, the Iron County uh, School District saying that all schools in Cedar City are on secure action. Just told you what that was about, where they have locked the doors and made sure the students cannot leave campus. Cedar City Police, just getting this word from our producer, Caitlin Johnston, saying that uh, they are assisting with a potential threat at Southern Utah University. So we have a very rapidly developing situation Uh, right now. We don't know if this is a hoax. We don't know if it's an actual threat. We do know, according to SUU, that there is nobody in custody and that they are treating this with the utmost caution and taking all security measures to keep everybody safe. So we're going to step away for just a few minutes. uh, But as we do, trust me, our team of reporters and producers in the newsroom, as well as Dave and myself here in studio, will continue to track down the latest developments. Dave, do you have anything that you want to add real quickly? You've been over there searching. Yeah, I've been looking at social media posts to see if there's any update. And what I did come across was a Again, about this time last year on April 9th, 2023, SEU students had a similar hours-long lockdown for an active shooter. That also appeared to be a, a, an apparent fake phone call. That was reported from the St. George Spectrum. Dave and Dujanovic. Dave and Debbie go out of their way to make sure you hear all sides of a story. They're working the phones to get several viewpoints on for you. Hi, it's Tim and Amanda. We get you the full story too. We have you covered on KSL News Radio. Hey, have you saved more than two hundred thousand dollars in an IRA or four hundred one k? You may not realize it now, but you've got a big problem on your hands, and that problem is taxes. Because if you don't take advantage of some tax planning strategies now, Uncle Sam could take a big chunk of your hard-earned retirement savings. Learn how you could reduce the taxes on your IRA and 401k with a free retirement tax savings analysis. It's from Boss Retirement Solutions. If you've saved more than $200,000, schedule your free tax strategy session now by calling 801-896-9622. Discover the tax planning strategies that could dramatically reduce your taxes in retirement. Call 801-896-9622. That's 801-896-9622. Advisory services offered through Boss Retirement Advisors, an SEC-registered investment advisory firm. Insurance products and services offered through Boss Retirement Solutions. You trust us for news and information in your car. Now trust us at home. KSL News Radio has you covered, keeping you informed on the latest breaking news, weather, traffic, sports, and more. Listen on your Amazon Echo or Google Home device. Just say, Alexa, open KSL News Radio, or listen on the KSL News Radio Listen app. Text the word app to 57500. KSL News Radio, we have you covered. Devotion to country, service to Utah. Brent Oren Hatch had a front row seat watching his father serve our state faithfully in the Senate. 
A constitutional conservative and lifelong Republican, Brent Orrin Hatch is a champion for the rule of law. He's running for Senate to stop this lawless president from destroying our country from within. Hatch will fight to secure the border once and for all and take on Mexican drug cartels to halt the flow of deadly fentanyl. Brent Orrin Hatch knows the national debt is just as big a threat to national security. Hatch won't rest until the budget's balanced and won't cave to the big spenders in both parties. Pro-life, deeply committed to religious liberty, rock-solid Utah conservative. Brent Orrin Hatch for Senate. Paid for by Conservative Outsider PAC, which is responsible for the content of this advertising. Not authorized by any candidate or candidate's committee. www.copac.us. Hey there, you and aisle two. I see you by the fiber and laxatives. You still using those to manage your constipation with belly pain? If your symptoms keep coming back, you may have irritable bowel syndrome with constipation, or IBSC. So you may need more than over-the-counter treatments to manage it. Ask your doctor about how Linzess can help you get ahead of it. Linzess linaclotide is a prescription medicine that treats IBSC in adults. It's not a laxative. It's a once-daily pill that helps you get ahead of your symptoms. It's proven to help you have more frequent and complete bowel movements and helps relieve overall abdominal symptoms, belly pain, discomfort, and bloating. These symptoms were studied in combination, not individually. Do not give Linzess to children less than two. It may harm them. Do not take Linzess if you have a bowel blockage. Get immediate help if you develop unusual or severe stomach pain, especially with bloody or black stools. The most common side effect is diarrhea, sometimes severe. If it's severe, stop taking Linzess and call your doctor right away. Other side effects include gas, stomach area pain, and swelling. Learn more at Linzess.com or call 1-800-LINZESS. Peyton was a very kind and giving person. At 15 years old, he sustained life-threatening injuries from a motorcycle accident that took his life. His family felt like Peyton would want to save others and made the decision to donate his organs. Because of their generosity, his organs saved a two-year-old girl, a teenage boy, and others that were desperate in need of life-saving organs. Go to DonorConnect.life and read about what it takes to become a donor. Did you know many people think that they're too old or not in good enough health to be a donor? Anyone can be a donor. If you were told that it could save the life for someone close to you, or even a stranger, would you please donate? April is National Donate Life Month, the perfect time to check your driver's license to make sure you said yes to giving the gift of life. Or visit DonorConnect.life to register as a donor. That's DonorConnect.life. Give hope. Heal life. Does your business struggle with ISO, SOC 2, HIPAA, CMMC, NIST, or other compliance? Register now for the WebCheckSecurity.com Cyber Summit. That's WebCheckSecurity.com. It was about 9.15 this morning that we caught this alert from Southern Utah University that there has been an unconfirmed report of an active shooter on the SUU campus in Cedar City. Didn't have a lot of details at that time, uh, but the Cedar City Police Department uh, since uh, then notifying us that they're aware, they were en route. I'm sure they're there by now. Local, local law enforcement uh, was en route, according to SUU, at 9.15 this morning. But SUU stating that uh, they have not, they're not aware of any suspect that's in custody. But Dave, you brought up an excellent point uh, that it was one year ago this week that SUU received a, a threatening type of phone call. Yes, uh, and it, it was a hoax. It was a, a prank call, or w- for whatever reason, it was it was a fake active shooter uh, scenario. Again, we don't know if that is the case right now, but it wasn't long ago, shortly before last year's incidents, that the FBI released a, a statement and said that they believe that many of these prank fake active shooter calls are coming from outside the country. I also want to note that Cedar City School District has put all of its schools on lockdown. Um, They have locked the students inside the building to keep them safe just in case. They said it was uh, due to police activity in the area. Uh, So uh, kind of drawing some conclusions there that it's connected to what is going on at SUU. SUU taking similar action, immediately putting all facilities on lockdown and also warning students or faculty who aren't currently on campus to just stay away. 
uh, as they try to figure out what's going on there. We, of course, will keep you up to date. Our team of reporters and producers, as you can tell, have been working feverishly in the newsroom to bring us the latest information. The moment we have a breaking development on this, we will be uh, you'll be the first to know. Salt Lake City 2034, in-depth coverage on KSL News Radio. This has been uh, just an intense news week. Um, and on top of it, the International Olympic Committee, makes the cherry on top, the International Olympic Committee has members of the committee uh, here in Utah kind of trying to put a fine point um, on our bid to bring the games back to Utah in 2034. I want to get uh, the Utah Transit Authority into this conversation, Dave, because I really want to know what their plan is, what their big picture plan is for expanding tracks and and maybe front runner before then. And how radically things have changed from the 2002 Olympics to what it will look like in 2034, because right now uh, there have been massive changes. We didn't have front runner. We didn't have front runner before. So that that came, I think, about six years later. That's a game changer. Joining us right now is uh, Jay Fox. Executive Jay, Director. all right, it's Welcome you. Welcome back to the show. There we are. Thanks. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, I remember uh, in '02. Um, you know, the, it we just didn't have this many tracks lines as we do now. So let's just start with that. I know we have a lot more of added. We can get to the airport. We can get to West Valley City. We can get all the way out to Daybreak, which was just, I don't know, Daybreak was probably more of a dust bowl back then than it is what it is now. But uh, what what's in the what's in the plans for 2034 with uh, tracks and front runner? Well, you know, actually, when you compare it out, uh, when you look at our map that we're looking at, actually, for 2030 versus 2002, we had about 12 miles of track. Between Front Runner and all the lines we have now, we got 125 miles wow. of track. So, it's huge. yeah, it's a yeah, huge difference. So, yeah, we, you know, uh, we're obviously going to leverage the system we already have. Uh, we're uh, going to have another line on tracks, the Orange Line, which will. I just actually talked about that uh, uh, last time we spoke. It's going to go from the airport all the way up to uh, the university, and it's good. That redesign is also going to take away five. Uh, three of five choke points for us and re- reduce the lays on the line. So that's really that's a really cool uh, addition, and uh, as well as 40 new uh, light rail cars that will make our system fully accessible because it's not just the Olympics that are coming, but it's the Paralympics as well. I know there's a lot of federal money available. Does this announcement or does the Olympics change any of that equation for you? You know, I was asked that question uh, yesterday, and I, I, all I can say is maybe. But at the same time, we're we're on the three major projects we have. One is front runner, uh, that uh, double tracking, which is in the president's budget right now. We have our Mid Valley Express, which is going to connect Murray and the um, and one of the facilities, which is the Maverick Center Bus Rapid Transit. We're expecting a grant agreement on that uh, in August. And then what I was just talking about the uh, future of light rail work in. Uh, Salt Lake County, uh, those uh, rail cars are uh, half of that value of the project, so it it reduces you know how much we, we need for that. And I would imagine that there's going to be a, a prioritized project by both the federal government and the state. Can you paint a little bit of a picture for me what the bus rapid transit looks like? Because I saw uh, some of the new plans that would connect uh, Utah County with all the way up to to Snow Basin with a, a little hop with a bus rapid transit. What it, what does that look like? Well, the so the three bus lines that are front and center in our uh, our strategic plan right now or our long-range plan right now, and I, I say that those are all going to be prioritized for the, uh, for 2030 to 34. The Mid-Valley Express, which, again, connects um, that Maverick Center, goes through Taylorsville, connects to the Murray Central. The other one is 56 West. Uh, which gives us an express bus line from the airport, uh, actually all the way down to Harriman. So that gives uh, a nice, um, you know, route for for people to come in and connect into um, all venues uh, across the region. And then uh, we're going to have a, a Salt Lake connector, which is going to bring us bring Farmington uh, connected into um, uh, the university as well. So those are the those are the hot ones. Uh, and the ones that, that we are anticipating funding for. Uh, you know, beyond that, uh, to your point, Dave, you know, as we see what additional federal funds might be available to support the Olympics, 
uh, you know, we'll we'll be able to move some projects uh, even more forward. But one one thing I shared yesterday was what we have right now is happening irregardless of the Olympics, mm-hmm. and that's a really cool thing because it's going to help people for years to come. As at, at the same time that it's going to make uh, the games that much more successful for us. Jay Fox, thanks for joining us, Executive Director at UTA. I want to get back to our developing story out of Southern Utah University. Just getting this new notification update from SUU. They said they reiterating that they got the suspicious phone call earlier regarding the possibility of an active shooter on the campus in Cedar City. Uh, they are also now issuing a suspect description. They said, please be aware of a suspect fitting the description of a white male with a black hat, black shades, green t-shirt, long hair, blue jeans, in the age range of 20 to 25 years old. So uh, there seems to be more to this than just the suspicious phone call we've been reporting about and the fact that the school has uh, done the right thing, obviously, for security and gone on lockdown. But they're now issuing this suspect description of a white male with a black hat, black shades, very specific, green T-shirt, long hair, wearing blue jeans, uh, 20 to 25 years of age. Facilities are all on lockdown or to be on lockdown. If they're on campus, they're safe, you know, to those who are on campus, follow lockdown procedures. If you are not on campus, so if you have a loved one, Going to SUU, whether they work there or they attend school there, let them know to just stay away. And wait for the all clear from college officials or local authorities. Uh, They say in their latest X post, you will be contacted via email, text, and updates on this website and social media as more information is available. We're uh, getting a lot of our information. Just if you have somebody who goes to school down there and you want to keep an eye on it uh, from your own home or your own phone, uh, off of social media, they seem to be posting this information quite rapidly, keeping the public informed. Very smart, very safe move. Also, the Cedar City School District uh, jumping into action as well to protect the younger kids in that area and the high school and also the elementary schools, uh, alerting parents and everybody. And, of course, we've been alerting you as well. We've got the information here that uh, they have also uh, implemented lockdown procedures at all of their um, public schools in that area as a precaution, saying that, um, you know, essentially they're reacting to an incident, a police incident in the area, Um, So as a precaution, they're keeping all of the kids safe in the classrooms um, and saying they won't be allowed to leave campus. People won't be allowed to come to campus down there. So, uh, you know, Cedar City, not a huge town, um, but certainly a hub of activity today. And we're certainly um, hoping that whoever the suspect turns out to be that – and whatever their um, mission was, that it's unsuccessful um, and that police are going to be able to apprehend this person and bring them in for some questioning. My goodness, uh, Cedar City, all schools down there on lockdown, SUU, saying that uh, there is a, now a description of somebody um, that they've put out and issued. We're going to continue to track this story. KSL Salt Lake City. From the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios, this is KSL News Radio. Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. It's 10 o'clock at KSL News Radio. I'm Dan Bomas. Our top story this hour is breaking news. Police in Cedar City responding to an unconfirmed report of an active shooter near the campus of Southern Utah University. The college is asking people to stay away from the campus for now and report any suspicious activity. Uh, A suspect is described as a 20 to 25 year old white male with a black hat, long hair, sunglasses, and a green t-shirt. The Iron County School District says all the schools in the Cedar City area are on secure action because of that situation at SUU. Ted Wilson, the former mayor of Salt Lake City, candidate for governor, head of the Hinckley Institute of Politics, passed away now. His family says he fought a long-term battle with congestive heart failure and Parkinson's disease. Our top national story this hour from ABC News. O.J. Simpson has passed away at the age of 76. He was a football star in college in the NFL. He was acquitted of murder and the death of his wife and another man, but spent nine years in prison after a robbery conviction 
just two months ago. Simpson posted a video denying that he was in hospice care and close to death. Your money at this moment, the Dow Jones average down on the day 83 points, but the NASDAQ is up 118. And our weather, we've got sunshine and temperatures in the mid-70s. That's next. KSL News Time, 1001. We hope you have the right app on your phone for news. You probably have dozens. But the KSL News Radio app, well, it makes our live stream super easy. Plus, our talk shows are right there as podcast for your workday. That's the app for KSL News Radio. Utah homeowners, it's time to roll up your sleeves and dive back into your backyard projects this spring with Geneva Rock. Whether you're planning to lengthen your patio for barbecues or extend your driveway for that new RV, boat, or new toy, Geneva Rock's Ready Mix Concrete is your go-to solution. Visit GenevaRock.com slash DIY to get started. Geneva can even introduce you to a licensed contractor for the job. Your project starts here. Visit GenevaRock.com slash DIY today. This heat's nice, but the real heat, it's coming. What's up, everybody? I'm Mike Wilson with Any Hour Services, and now is a great time to schedule a preseason AC tune-up. And I'm about to save you some money. Normally, we charge $129 to tune up your air conditioner. But if you call today, Thursday, April 11th, and mention you heard this ad, we'll give you $100 off and tune up your air conditioner for only $29. Call Any Hour Services today and schedule. 801-443-7400. Manufacturers recommend annual maintenance to save on utility bills, identify breakdowns before they happen, and to help your air conditioner last for as many years as possible. 801-443-7400. If it's more convenient, go to anyhourservices.com and look for the red button that says Book Online. Schedule your $29 tune-up there. That's a $129 value for only $29. If you get a hold of us today, call Any Hour Services right now at 801-443-7400. Google Any Hour Services or schedule online at anyhourservices.com. Advertising used to be simple. Your options were radio, TV, newspaper, and let's not forget the yellow pages. Now it seems like a tidal wave of options. Podcast, cable TV, streaming, OTT, CTV, audio network, smart speakers. On top of that, you need digital marketing for your website along with SEM, SEO, display, video, YouTube, email, and all the social media platforms. Look, you're the expert in your business. Wouldn't it be nice to have an expert to market you? We are Bonneville Salt Lake, the local marketing and media company you know and trust. We reach customers across all digital and social platforms and have the reach of traditional advertising available as well. We find your customer anytime, any place, anywhere on any device here in Utah or anywhere in the world. We work to optimize your results with our in-house local team of experts, providing you with qualified leads, not just impressions. Contact Stephanie Palmer at KSL for a free consultation including a complete digital audit with no obligation or cost to you email s palmer at ksl.com that's s palmer at ksl.com jazz fans secure your seats for the next nba season by getting season tickets season ticket members get special perks like team store discounts savings on in arena concessions and more be there for every moment during the 2024 25 season by calling or texting 801-355-DUNK today 801-355-DUNK let's go jazz Traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. Here's Heather Kelly. We do have a crash northbound I-15 right at the point of the mountain on the Utah side of the Utah Salt Lake County border. The vehicles are all over on the left shoulder, but there's not enough traffic right now to cause any type of delay. In fact, you're going to be delay free on all the major freeways across the Wasatch Front and Wasatch Back. Put the equity in your home to work with a home equity line of credit and get 6.49% APR for the first six months. Learn more at cypresscu.com. Heather Kelly in the KSL Traffic Center. Our KSL weather sunshine today, highs in the 70s, a few clouds tomorrow and Saturday with highs moving to the upper 70s. Right now, we're at 54 degrees with sunny skies. I'm Dan Bomas from the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. Listen online at kslnewsradio.com. We're Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Dave and Dejanovic, your morning companions for talk, analysis, and key perspectives on Utah's biggest stories on KSL News Radio.
We continue to, uh, our developing story coverage here for just the next few minutes. Uh, learned in the 9 o'clock hour about uh, SUU going on lockdown as well as um, all public schools in the Cedar City area. Uh, SUU, Southern Utah University, uh, alerting students uh, and the public that they've gotten a suspicious phone call about a possibility of an active shooter on campus in Cedar City. Then uh, just a bit ago, Dave, they released uh, what they called a, a, a description. Um, they said, please be aware of a suspect fitting the description of a white male with a black hat, black shades, green T-shirt, long hair, blue jeans, 20 to 25 years old. Um, seems very, very specific um, in a situation like this. So um, they're telling people to just be on the lookout also to basically hide you know if you're on the campus get into the get into lockdown mode find a room find uh you know an area that you can hide and lock the door deb i'm seeing an up to the minute update from the suu website uh again this was uh right now they say emergency notification we received reports of hearing noises that sounded like shots fired at the science building at Southern Utah University. All SUU facilities are in lockdown. If you're on campus, follow lockdown procedures. Okay. I, I feel like right now we cannot step away from this story, Caitlin. Um, so I know we're having a hard time uh, getting information out of Cedar City, which is um, obviously there's a, there's a huge distance between uh, Salt Lake City and Cedar City. And it's not a huge community. They're uh, very busy with a uh, situation that is ongoing right now. So I think we just need to continue to try to get as much information as we can. Dave, you read that on the SUU website. This happened uh, you know, first thing this morning at about 9 o'clock. We started getting word that there had been the suspicious phone call. Now, you um, immediately uh, remembered that last April at this time, that SUU had received another suspicious phone call. We reported that. However, this seems to have escalated since then to the point where um, where um, now we have a description, a more specific description of somebody that police are looking for and also the public is being warned to look out for. And then it's since gone you know, into what lockdown mode there. They've secured the buildings. They've told all of the, everybody on campus that they should be in lockdown mode. And if you aren't, get to lockdown mode. And then um, also uh, continuing to c- keep all the kids in the area safe, the Iron County School District. Is it the Iron County School District, Cedar City area has... Um, put the, uh, all of its schools in lockdown as well. And that's, you know, elementaries to high school. This is the first we've heard uh, of shots fired or reports that they've heard sounds or noises that sounded like shots fired. Again, this was posted uh, less than two minutes ago to the SUU website. Every, every page that I go to on SUU has this alert at the very top of the website. And they say to students, monitor, stay locked down until you hear from officials. We will update the website. We will update social media when things are all clear. The first alert, according to this website, came in at 9.23 this morning, started with unconfirmed reports of an active shooter on the SUU campus in Cedar City. They didn't have any further details at that time. Um, They said, please be alert, notify authorities of any suspicious activity. Local law enforcement is en route. Um, and then they told everybody, if you haven't uh, been to campus, stay away from campus. Don, you uh, attended SUU. You want to jump on the microphone. Uh, you're a graduate of Southern Utah University. It's it's not a, a very large campus. However, um, it's big enough that uh, why don't you come on the air and kind of describe the campus uh, for us and let us know kind of what what uh, you remember from uh, being down there and was there these kinds of drills or lockdown procedures when you were there? When I was there, there wasn't because that was a number of years ago. In fact, uh, I graduated almost 30 years ago now. Have you been back since? I have been back. My parents still live down there. My sister is actually a teacher at the high school, so I'm very connected to Cedar City. I was down there just a couple of weeks ago. The campus itself is right in the middle of town. It it literally is kind of the heart and core of of Cedar City. 
It goes from about 2nd West down to I-15, and then it extends from uh, about 2nd North down to 1st or 2nd South. Um, the couple of, you mentioned an elementary school that's on lockdown. That's actually where I went to school. South Elementary is just, just south of uh, the university campus. And then uh, Cedar City High School is just just a little bit further west of that. Is it Don Brinkerhoff, uh, by the way, um, is very instrumental behind the scenes here at our show and also a reporter here at KSL News Radio. Grew up in the Cedar City area, very familiar, went to SUU, where we are now getting reports of a possible um, active shooter on campus at SUU. The students have been ordered to go on lockdown. Um, as well as the surrounding public schools all in lockdown. Is the campus all one big campus, Don, or are there satellite campuses around Cedar City? It's mostly focused. It's pretty pretty consistent end-to-end, and, and the science building where shots were heard is kind of on the southeast portion of the campus. Um, it's... Uh, it looks to be North near of, the upper quad. Does yeah, that sound right? It's it's right next to the upper quad. In fact, the uh, the upper quad. That's you know we play intramural sports and things there. It's right just on the south end of that upper quad. And I would imagine, let's see, it's at nine o'clock, ten o'clock in the morning on a Thursday. That campus could be pretty packed with students. I'm I'm sure that uh, most of the students were probably in class at nine o'clock just because uh, students. That's a typical time, and yeah. Thursday is one of those days that even if it's, a, you know, an every other day class, Tuesday, Thursday classes are pretty Not common. to get too personal, but you said your sister's a teacher there at the high school. We know the high school also on lockdown, uh, likely connected to this just as a precaution. Have you heard anything from her? You can... I have I have not. Okay. But Mom I and Dad saying ha- anything to you? Have you been Why? in touch with Mom and Dad? Are they, are they asking how she's doing? I haven't been in touch with my mom and dad. They're okay. in a uh, they're in a medical situation and oh, may I not see. even know about it right now. Well, maybe that's good then. They're yes. not up to date on this. Um, and um, but hopefully um, everything's safe at the high school. Would you let us, you know, know if you hear anything that you can report on the air? I will. Of course, we're thinking about your sis there, uh, who's a teacher at the high school. They took precautions, rightfully so. Um, now we have all of these procedures in place. Thank goodness we do that when something goes afoul in any area, they just, as a precaution, go on to, into lockdown mode right away. Um, and the latest alert we're seeing, the latest update, Dave, is, which is the emergency notification that you caught. It crossed at 10.06 this morning. The SUU reporting that it's received reports of hearing noises that sounded like shots fired at the science building at SUU. SUU facilities are on lockdown, all of them, according to this alert, and that if you're on campus, follow the lockdown procedures by going to the nearest room and locking the door. If you're not on campus, stay away. Police are on scene and investigating. Are you seeing anything new on on, on your side of this, Dave? They've, again, they, they keep updating this every few minutes. Uh, the most recent, again, was just uh, about four minutes ago. Just reiterating that they've received reports of hearing noises that sounded like shots fired at the science building uh, on that southeast part of campus. Okay, we're going to continue to track developments. Uh, Just a minute, I'm getting another text. Okay, it's not related to this story. So we'll step away for just a moment, gather more information, and be right back. Dave and Dujanovic. Current events can have a lot of moving parts. Our job is to make it easy to keep up. You're part of a bigger world. So spend 15 or 20 minutes here and be part of it. Join us weekday mornings between 5 and 9 on KSL News Radio. April in Utah means warmer temps, spring runoff, and yes, road work. For every spring surprise, rely on KSL News Radio. Tim Hughes and Amanda Dixon cover what happened overnight from 5 to 9. Dave and Debbie and Boyd Matheson have in depth conversation during the day. And Jeff Kaplan takes you home with his trademark minute of news. All season, every day. We have you covered on KSL News Radio. 
People decide to lose weight for all different kinds of reasons. I mean, I, I interviewed someone who told me that 30% of all Utahns are pre-diabetic. Maybe it's your health, or maybe it's the fact that summer's going to be here any day and you got a wedding this summer and you just want to feel more confident in your dress as the mother of the bride or the father of the bride. And you know that's what's happening in my life uh, this summer with my daughter who lost 42 pounds on this great program. You talk about feeling confident if you're the bride, that's your day. People do it for all different reasons, like Jim. You know, I have the family history of, of family members being obese, and I did not want that. And I figured now would be a, a good time that I could take control of something. So whatever the reason is for you, today is the day to start the Soda Weight Loss Program. Yeah, it's nice to know that message is getting out. And really, if people see you as good as you look today, they will want to get in on the program, too. It is Soda Weight Loss. Go to SodaWeightLoss.com, which stands for... State of the art. It is state of the art. Where does a journey to wellness begin? Do you start looking for diet ideas? Or searching for exercise plans? Actually, you don't have to look far. Just look to the first two letters of the word wellness. We means you don't have to figure it out yourself. It means your hopes and challenges are a perfect match for our knowledge and resources. It means anything you want to achieve. Together, we can achieve better. Because wellness begins with we. Intermountain Health, the power of we. Real Salt Lake's 2024 campaign is officially underway. And if you haven't felt the pulse of the riot at America First Field, you're missing out. Diego Luna, yeah, yeah. he'll have a go. Yeah. RSL is back. Rally behind Chicho, Diego Luna, and the squad as they embark on a journey to bring the cup back home to Utah. Chicho, Chicho has it in. Real Salt Lake. Get in on the action. Secure your tickets today. Visit RSL.com or call 844-REAL-TIX. You wouldn't know it, but most financial advisors are put in a box. I'm Jeff Jr. from Trajan Wealth, and I want to provide you a little insight about financial advisors. Most financial advisors have to sell what their company requires them to sell, and many advisors have to only adhere to what's called a suitability standard. A suitability standard is a limited standard of care, not requiring what's sold to be best just suitable. Advisors with this loose standard often have limited investment and product selection. Trajan Wealth is held to a fiduciary standard, which is the highest standard of care in the advisory business. And that's just one of the many reasons we have billions of dollars under our care and attract clients from other advisors. Raise your standards today and call Trajan Wealth. Call 801-899-7600. That's 801-899-7600. Advisory services offered through Trajan Wealth, LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor. Weekend Warriors. Barbecue Brawlers. Driveway Toy Haulers. Let Geneva Rock's Ready Mix Concrete be your outdoor extension solution. Geneva Rock assists DIYers and provides contractor referrals. Visit GenevaRock.com slash DIY. With the three things you need to know this hour, I'm Dan Bomas. First, Southern Utah University is telling everyone on campus to stay indoors and follow lockdown protocol because of an unconfirmed report of an active shooter incident near the campus. Second, former Salt Lake City Mayor Ted Wilson has passed away at the age of 84. Third, O.J. Simpson, who went from winning the Heisman Trophy and playing in the NFL to serving time in prison passed away at the age of 76. Right now, 54 degrees in Salt Lake City. Back to Dave and Dujanovic on KSL News Radio. Dave and Dujanovic. Okay, this has just been a developing story almost minute by minute down at Southern Utah University, and we are just tracking this story as best we can given the distance down to Cedar City. Uh, but Dave, you just caught another alert about the suspicious situation regarding the uh, phone call that SUU got um, uh, having to do with a possible active shooter on campus. What's the update? The SUU website has done a phenomenal job of updating and giving uh, the latest through their campus alert system. And at the very top of the SUU website, any page you go on the SUU website, you will see this SUU alert. And the latest emergency notification says that the science buildings at SUU are currently being cleared. All buildings still remain on lockdown if you're on campus. Follow lockdown procedures by going into the nearest room and locking the door. If you are not on campus, stay away. Police are on the scene and investigating. We just reached out to the SUU Police Department. They said we have nothing more to add to what is already being well, posted on the website. And they're probably just absolutely swamped uh, given the what's going on down there and the 
high alert that the entire community is on because they've not only locked down SUU, um, and that's, you know, it's not a small campus. It's not the largest campus, but it's not a small campus. They're also uh, locking down and have locked down uh, all of the public schools in the Cedar City area as a precaution. Um, clearing the science uh, building, uh, that is uh, why that is critical uh, information, at least in, the, in regards to this update, is that in an early alert, alert, SUU said we received reports of hearing noises that sounded like shots fired at the science building at Southern University, Southern Utah University. So um, they got to get in there and they've got to clear that building room by room. Um, we're trying to reach out to some of uh, my former colleagues at the FBI who often respond. They aren't the first responders. Police are. Uh, but the FBI will often come in um, as, you know, I want to say as like a second response team in situations like this to add uh, layers of law enforcement to assist local law enforcement authorities because they are the first responders in most situations. Um, And uh, so they'll be going room to room, clearing the buildings, making sure uh, that, you know, either they can uh, get a hold of the suspect, which they put a pretty descriptive description out of, um, or uh, make sure everybody there is safe. Yeah, they were looking for a a suspect. They said, please be aware of a suspect that fits this description, white male with a black hat, black shades, green t-shirt, long hair, Blue jeans, somewhere in the 20 to 25-year-old range. Uh, While we continue to gather more information with our team of producers and reporters in the newsroom, um, I'm just going to step away from this for just a moment. Trust me, I am really, really um, keeping, as you are, Dave, keeping very, very close eye on all the developments on this. We'll bring you back uh, in the loop as soon as we know more information, either out of Cedar City or we get somebody else on the line. Uh, who is in that area and uh, can figure out, um, you know, give, to give us more information. We heard earlier from John Brinkerhoff, who's uh, one of our great co-workers here at KSL News Radio and has been for a number of years. He grew up in that area. He described the campus to us. He described the science building to us and said, yeah, I mean, Thursday morning at 9 a.m. when this thing went down, certainly a lot of students on campus there at SUU, that it's largely, it's just one main campus. Because I asked him about, you know, satellite campuses in the area. Oftentimes schools will do that now. Um, He said, no, it's just one main campus. And now since then, we've confirmed that uh, they're looking specifically at the science building. Uh, But I want to also talk about our other big developing story here, which is the real possibility that in about seven days, we'll have an announcement that uh, Salt Lake City area will be getting a a National Hockey League team um, in the form of the uh, Coyotes, which currently play in a very precarious uh, situation down in the uh, Tempe, Arizona State, Tempe area, um, being bought by Ryan Smith, the current owner of the Jazz. Of course, Ryan Smith has been um, not, not toying with the idea, but outright saying he's going to bring an NHL team here. And it looks like it can happen in seven days or it might happen in the next seven days. An announcement might be made. How to remind our listeners, Dave, how we know this is really going on behind the scenes. The rumors had been coming out for quite some time. Ryan Smith has been very open about wanting the NHL, that he's been communicating with the league directly But it wasn't until yesterday that we saw and got reports that the NHL had created two different schedules for the Arizona Coyotes. One was, this is the schedule, this is what it would look like if Arizona stayed. Here's what it would look like if they moved to Salt Lake City. Now, that is a monumental shift and goes from being quaint little rumors to this is not just going to happen, it's going to happen for next season. That is a huge development because unlike the Major League Baseball rumors and trying to ramp up about the possibility of bringing Major League Baseball here, we're still looking six, seven years out for Major League Baseball. Right. This would be October, six months from now. That is monumental and would just shoot – uh, this is this is a rocket ship. This is moving so fast. Um, and and uh, Hans and Scotty, uh, the Sports Zone, talked to Frank Saravelli. Um, he is the one who broke the story 
Um, I'm trying to remember the name of his website. Uh, Daily, I'm going to get there. Hold on a second. I got a lot of paperwork in front of me here. Daily Face Off, of course, that's what it's called. <laughs> He's got hundreds of thousands of, no, this of guy, followers. This, this guy is not knows just a, his yeah. stuff. Daily Face Off, and it's you know I'm not diminishing it yeah. at all. He's hundreds of thousands of followers on Twitter. Uh, this is a this is a website that is dedicated solely to hockey. This guy knows his stuff. Um, and here's and here's what he's been saying about this move. And bring NHL hockey to Salt Lake City in time second. for puck drop in October. All right. Let me add this more. This is developing rapidly. It's not done, but I'm told that they've made significant and meaningful progress on what would be the framework of an agreement to sell the Arizona Coyotes franchise ultimately to – Ryan Smith and the Smith Entertainment Group. And this would make the Arizona Coyotes owner somewhere in the neighborhood of $700 million in profit, seven to $900 million in profit. Uh, so financially, it is a huge win for this owner. Uh, but one of the things where my mind goes, Debbie, is can we support this? Now that it's getting real, can we support this? Can we support a National Hockey League team? Because we've had minor league hockey. We've had the Grizzlies for years. And we don't fill up that stadium. They get no. about no. five, 6,000 fans per game. That's not exactly who shows up as well, right? That, that's, that's the tickets that are sold. I've been to plenty of Grizzlies games where there's just a, a handful of folks. So – have we a track record that says, yeah, we can absolutely not just improve on what the Grizzlies are doing, but can we fill up the Delta Center by bringing in an NHL team? And and that's where I think ultimately it's Ryan Smith's decision where he says, yeah, I absolutely believe that's what will happen. I want to get back to our breaking news, our developing story. Uh, we've got a development on our breaking news story, so let's get the information out to our listeners. This is just posted moments ago on X by Southern Utah University. The science building at SUU, the buildings, plural, have been fully cleared at Southern Utah University. There has been confirmation that no shots were fired. All buildings still remain on lockdown. Uh, they're still advising if you're on campus, follow lockdown procedures by going into the nearest room and locking the door. This all began to unfold just after 9 o'clock this morning. Uh, reports of possible shots fired at the science building at SUU. Police are now working to clear those buildings, and we just heard they've confirmed that no shots were fired. Again, initially where, where my mind went was back about a year ago this time when SUU had a prank call about an active shooter on campus. That proved to be exactly that, a prank call. The FBI had warned that this was happening across the nation and that these prank calls were likely coming from outside of the country. Uh, this happened to high schools here at Spanish Fork High School. And similar, um, similar developments when there was this initial feeling that there's an active shooter, everyone's in lockdown. I remember speaking to students and administrators at Spanish Fork. He said, oh, yeah, the rumors were flying where kids started to say, oh, yeah, I heard shots being fired. Well, a similar uh, thing has happened at SUU where they were getting reports that maybe mm -hmm. they had heard shots being fired. But you just said they have confirmed yeah. that no shots had been yeah. fired. Mm -hmm. There's been a confirmation that no shots were fired. Uh, the science building's fully cleared. Um, they, police usually go in and clear those buildings, so um, I'm sure that they've been in those buildings going room to room to determine uh, what, if anything, is going on. Uh, along the way, they had put out a complete description of a possible suspect that they were warning uh, students and faculty to look out for. Um, so... This is very, very early on. Um, we always want to bring you the latest information as we get it, um, and uh, we will continue to track it. We don't know uh, if this was indeed a hoax. We don't know um, 
if this was indeed um, a, a real situation down there. But our team of reporters and producers continue to track these developments and have been in touch with the police there locally, as well as uh, Southern Utah University. We'll keep you posted as the story continues to, to develop throughout the morning. It's 10:30 at KSL News Radio. I'm Dan Bomas. KSL's top story this hour, and we still have breaking news that lockdown still in effect on the campus of Southern Utah University in Cedar City. But authorities there have now confirmed that no shots were fired in this incident. Police said there were reports of noises that sounded like shots near the science building. The science buildings on campus have now been cleared. The college told students and staff to follow lockdown protocol by going into the nearest room and locking the door. Everyone else was told to stay away from the campus for now and report any suspicious activity. They were looking for a man described as white, 20 to 25 years old with a black hat, long hair, sunglasses, and a green shirt. The Iron County School District says all the uh, schools in the Cedar City area were on secure action because of that situation at USU. Residents in the potential flood path of Panguitch Lake gathered last night to hear an update from leaders and to share their concerns. KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston has more. The word from Panguitch and Utah leaders is that the risk of a blown dam is dropping, but they're not out of the danger zone yet. Officials say teams have been cutting ice and draining water to relieve the pressure on the dam, and the dam has responded by rotating back a few degrees from its concerning tilt downstream. One state leader says water leader uh, water levels rather could fall below the crack in the dam uh, by the end of next week. Your money at this moment, the Dow Jones average uh, down on the day 123 points. The Nasdaq is up 109. And here on the Wasatch Front, we're just seeing sunshine today. That's next. KSL News Time, 1032. It's a priority for us at this station to bring you all sides of a story and to talk about the news fairly, completely. Get all the facts and be really aware. Utah's Morning News with us, Tim and Amanda. Weekday mornings, 5 to 9 on KSL News Radio. Oh, how I wish my mom had known about the Connecticut water softener back when I was growing up. <laughs> because I remember that was my job. I, excuse me. I had to load the uh, bags of rock salt onto my shoulder, my little shoulders back then, and I would haul it in and dump it into the water softener. They do remember growing up with soft water, and I didn't fully appreciate how important that is to the home until I bought a home myself. And I started having all the problems that hard water brings with it. Uh, needing a jackhammer to get all the soap or the, the hard water stains off of your shower and clean and the buildup, that has been a, a massive problem. So when Kinetico installed our soft water system, it has been wonderful. 24-7, optimally soft water. It never runs out. Zero maintenance. And when I was telling you my boohoo story about carrying all the, the salt, with the Connecticut water softener, 70% less salt. So save those poor little kids' shoulders as they're hauling in the, the soft water bags. If you're interested, give Connecticut of Utah a call. They're an authorized Connecticut dealer. 801-576-8600. That's 801-576-8600. Everyone's house is different, but they're all the same in one way. We all have those places where the Wi-Fi just won't go. I mean, for you, maybe it's the attic. For me, it's my basement. If you had wall-to-wall Wi-Fi from Xfinity, you could worry less about these dead spots. Finally. With wall-to-wall Wi-Fi from Xfinity, you get fast speeds throughout your home, a reliable connection in every room, and power for all your devices. Even when everybody's online. That's wall-to-wall Wi-Fi. Only on the Xfinity 10G network. Get wall-to-wall Wi-Fi from Xfinity for a reliable connection throughout your home Now through June 21st, new customers can get started with gig speed internet for $25 a month for two years with no annual contract and free Wi-Fi equipment included when you add unlimited mobile. Here's what you do. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, that's 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. I know it's Thursday, but give me 60 seconds and I'll explain how spending $29 guarantees your air conditioner won't break down this summer, or we'll give you your money back. What's up, everybody? I'm Mike Wilson with Any Hour Services, and when you have Any Hour do the annual maintenance for your air conditioner, it comes with our no-breakdown guarantee. 
801-443-7400. Normally, we charge $129 to tune up your air conditioner, but not today. If you call today, Thursday, April 11th, and mention you heard this ad, we'll give you $100 off and tune up your air conditioner for only $29. 801-443-7400. If your AC breaks down any time this summer after we've tuned it up, we'll dispatch a technician to your home to diagnose and troubleshoot your system for free. And we'll give you back the $29 you paid for the tune-up. Where else are you going to find an offer with this little risk? You literally get your money back if your air conditioner breaks down. Call any of our services and schedule your $29 air conditioner tune-up. 801-443-7400. You can Google any hour services. You can even schedule online at anyhourservices.com. Traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's DinoPay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. Here's Heather Kelly. Well, no delays right now anywhere across the Wasatch Front, but we still have a crash northbound I-15 right at the point of the mountain. It's on the Utah side of the Utah Salt Lake County border just before you go over the top of the point of the mountain. Uh, that's the only problem. Those cars are over on the left shoulder, not causing slowdowns. Murdoch Chevrolet, home of 2.9% for six years on Silverado. Heather Kelly in the KSL Traffic Center. Sunshine today with highs in the low 70s. A few clouds tomorrow and Saturday, but the highs will get into the upper 70s. And right now, we're at uh, 55 degrees with sunny skies. I'm Dan Bomas from the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. Listen online at kslnewsradio.com. We're Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Continuing to give you updates uh, on that developing story at Southern Utah University. Uh, the latest information is that there was uh, no shots fired. Uh, that has been confirmed by SUU. Initially, they thought perhaps uh, there were sounds that sounded like uh, gunfire at the science buildings at, in Cedar City. And Dave, I know you're reading a new update that was just issued moments ago from SUU. It says that although the science building has been fully cleared at SUU, nothing has been found that the other buildings at SUU are still being cleared by law enforcement. Uh, KSL News Radio reporter Don Brinkerhoff grew up in uh, southern Utah, Cedar, in Cedar City specifically, um, and also went to SUU. You've been talking to folks down there, um, you know, in between commercial <laughs> breaks here. Uh, bring us some good news, Don. What do you know? So the good news, um, the person I talked to, they said they had cleared the building um, that they were in, and the police came through and okay. said the building is clear. They were clearing the science building as I was talking to them. Um, the they've kind of there's kind of been a communication. Uh, I won't say problem, but a, bit of a gap maybe maybe a little bit of a communication gap. They said that they actually got the alert from off campus before they got it on campus. Ooh. So that'll be something to look at. But right now feels like at least talking talking to this individual that things have kind of calmed down a little bit on campus excellent that good yes they're still on lockdown they're still mm -hmm. uh, law enforcement still sweeping the buildings the science building is one of the bigger buildings on campus and so if that has been completely sw cleared now they'll they'll move to some of those other uh low buildings nearby probably Wow, that's good news, Don. Glad to hear that. Glad everybody is safe, and that's what you learned. Everybody's safe. Yes. Uh, and then, of course, we're learning from SUU that they're confirming that there were no shots uh, were fired, um, that there, that has been confirmed. And as you just heard from our very own Don Brinkerhoff, who's been in communications with folks down in the Cedar City area, that police were in the science building clearing that area. And then SUU, um, just a few moments ago, issuing yet another update an emergency notification saying that the buildings at SUU are still being cleared by law enforcement, but earlier saying that they um, they had been clearing the science building. So I think we're you know we're getting to a point where there's uh, there is that good news that we'd hoped for initially when we started reporting this. And then of course the investigation will continue to figure out where the breakdown in communication was, what actually happened. Uh, where did those false reports of gunshots come from? A lot of layers that they're going to have to uncover. Priced out. Housing. Special coverage with Dave and Dejanovic. We so appreciate the Stern team here in Utah being on Team D2 for our ongoing coverage of what we think is the hottest story in uh, 2024, and that is Utah's housing market. 
Um, and it's such a hot button issue right now because uh, we know as, as spring heats up, so do home sales and home buyers trying to jump into the market. And we're we're start we're we're, we're going to take a, a deep dive at um, people getting into homes, Dave, that are kind of pre built for you to rent out the basement. And these aren't homes with the basement where you got to go, you know, you got to enter the home itself, the main area, and then go down the stairs to get to the basement. This is, you know, homes that are specifically being built across Utah. So you can rent out the basement and defray the cost of that pricely monthly mortgage. I kind of chuckle because we're finding a million different ways to describe these. It's a duplex. It, it largely is. It's one building, and there's two different living spaces. Now, sometimes we call it a mother-in-law apartment. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it'll be just a, an accessory, an attached dwelling unit. Something. There's a lot of different ways that we can describe it, but I think what people are finding is they can help subsidize their rent. They lose a little square footage. They can't live in quite as big a house, but it has enormously helped when you're trying to afford these very expensive homes. I think it's super smart. I think it's a great way to have a side hustle that, you know, cuts down that high uh, monthly mortgage. It gets you into a larger home with a lot in a neighborhood. Um, And I I say, why not? You know, if you can make $1,500 a month in your sleep. Now, I know I've been a landlord. It's not always like. Not that easy. Yeah, it's not always that easy. You got to get the right tenant. But if you can get a long-term tenant into your basement and they live in a space that's inviting and built specifically for them to live in, as opposed to, you know, those low ceilings in some of these homes in downtown Salt Lake City. I've been in a lot of homes looking for homes. I look for homes. My husband and I look for homes. I look for homes for, for me. We've we've had rental properties. Our son has been out looking for a home. And sometimes, you know, when you're 6'5", Dave, as you are, and you go down the basement steps and you got to tilt your head <laughs> to the right the or whole to thing. the left. Yep. That's not that's not great long term living, um, and so um, we are lo- we started looking around at this. Um, our our team of producers started looking around, and we actually found like for example a home in, in Eagle Mountain. It's five hundred eighty thousand dollars. Well, you got to make about one hundred fifty grand a year, maybe a little more than that, so you're not extremely house poor to qualify for that. It's, but it's a five bedroom, three bath with a mother in law apartment, and it's built specifically. So you can shut off the main living space totally and your tenant has a spot to park and, you know, walk in through their separate entrance. And these are built with, obviously, you need a kitchen. So you got a kitchen down there Mm -hmm. and you've got the nine foot ceilings. So those aren't the really low ceilings where if you're a tall person, you got to walk around with your neck to the left or to the right. I love this idea it's really catching on, and I think this is going to be the wave of the future where you're going to find you know, more and more families in that duplex living, as you called it. But this is, this is a great way to go, and it gets young families. Uh, you know, So if, you're, if your mortgage payment is $4,000 a month because that beast cost you half a million dollars, well, if you're collecting $1,500 a month for that nice little two-bedroom, one-bath, you know, bath-and-a-half uh, kitchen, full kitchen downstairs, maybe it's even 2000 a month. Well, now you've just cut your mortgage in half. It does. It makes a ton of sense. There's a couple problems with this. Number one, the cities. A lot of cities don't allow for They're this. They're going to have to get over it. I totally agree. They're going to have to get over it. Yes, but they haven't. A lot of restrictions are, have been put in place to prevent this yeah. kind of thing. And also the... Uh, if you have an older home and you want to maybe add some of these these features or or close things off, you got to go through a permitting process. Well, it I do is... want to make sure that they're safe to live in. Yes, because if you have an older home with basement windows that are you know have the big wrought iron gates in front of yeah. them where people can't escape if something were to happen, you can't have that. But these homes are built with basements above yes. ground. Even the new builds, though, sometimes they'll the cities will have restrictions where they say only a family member yeah. can live here. Yeah, that's You're not like, going to work. Uh, why do you care if it's a family well, member or a stranger? But Maybe the folks up there on the hill are going to have to do something about it. If the local jurisdictions can't figure out a way to allow homeowners to buy homes, people who are actually going to live there. Because what I'm worried about is you can have it that way 
city officials. But what's going to happen is that these major corporations are going to come in with the cash and keep scooping up these homes. And so what you're going to have is just a bunch of rental properties anyway. Anyway, I would much rather have a young family who wants a starter home or maybe they're stepping up to their next level home, move in, rent the basement out. And they're going to also be, I think, really careful about who they rent it out to because they're going to be your living home. next door to yeah. them, like right on top of them, yeah. literally. But so, that's you you make a good point. It's a it's a mishmash of laws in city yeah. ordinances. Uh, the only way to standardize that is to do something at the state level. Uh, learn your home's true value in 30 seconds if you visit the Stern team online at sternteam.com. Uh, yeah, appreciate the Stern team. They've been great partners. Looking forward to having them back on the air with us very soon to walk us through. What do we want to talk about? Like how much money you actually need to come in with when you're buying a new home for all those closing costs and the earnest money and all that mm. other stuff. So next time they're on the air with us next week, we'll talk about that. Straight ahead, Dave, you caught this story about, was it a bald eagle that was found shot in Utah? Yeah. Yeah. What, what Can you give us just a little bit of a scoop on that? Uh, they don't know who did it, but what I found out is the punishment is harsh. Did they catch him? Not yet. Okay, but if they do, the punishment. Well, let's walk through what the punishment is. I think it's probably in the neighborhood of six figures. Oof. Next. Dave and Dujanovic. Here's a trick to podcasting at work and getting all the Utah news you love. Download the KSL News Radio app. The podcast for Utah's morning news and Dave and Debbie are right there. Dozens of podcasts a day. That's the app for KSL News Radio. Okay, I'm trying to count up on my fingers how many weeks I am into this Salt Lake City fat loss program. Uh, I think I'm probably 11, almost three months. I'm, I'm approaching three months. And I will tell you, my biggest concern, I thought I could lose the weight. And I did. I lost 57 pounds in 60 days. My question was, can I now keep it off? Because I think we've all done this. We've all lost weight. And then you just gain it back. I have maintained that I'm at 56 pounds. So I've gained back about a half a pound. uh, But I've kept it off. I've kept it off in a safe and natural way. Salt Lake City fat loss helped me lose that weight without surgery, without injections, no point counting, no crazy exercise routines, and no prepackaged meals. If you're interested and you want to try to lose some of that stubborn weight, go online, get a free consultation at slcfatloss.com. That's the best way to do it. Just look at it online at slcfatloss.com. Devotion to country, service to Utah. Brent Oren Hatch had a front row seat watching his father serve our state faithfully in the Senate. A constitutional conservative and lifelong Republican, Brent Oren Hatch is a champion for the rule of law. He's running for Senate to stop this lawless president from destroying our country from within. Hatch will fight to secure the border once and for all and take on Mexican drug cartels to halt the flow of deadly fentanyl. Brent Oren Hatch knows the national debt is just as big a threat to national security. Hatch won't rest until the budget's balanced and won't cave to the big spenders in both parties. Pro-life, deeply committed to religious liberty, rock-solid Utah conservative. Brent Oren Hatch for Senate. Paid for by Conservative Outsider PAC, which is responsible for the content of this advertising. Not authorized by any candidate or candidate's committee. www.copac.us Sometimes owning a small business means making big upgrades. Make them happen with a small business equipment loan from Cypress Credit Union. For a limited time, get a rate discount of 0.50% APR and make the most of affordable credit union rates. Let Cypress help you purchase or upgrade your commercial equipment today. Apply online at cypresscu.com. Cypress Credit Union, your future is our future. Federally insured by NCUA, equal opportunity lender. Hey guys, do you know your tea level? Revive Men's Health here in Salt Lake City is helping you take that first step toward better health and enhanced intimacy with a free testosterone level test, exam, and consultation. Plus, for this month only, qualified patients can kickstart their treatment with a free supply of ED medication. Call Revive Men's Health Salt Lake City 
at 801-263-7777. That's 801-263-7777. Or visit revivemenshealth.com. For the right repair and the right paint, the right choice is manufacturer-certified Martins Collision Repair. Hi, I'm Tiago Martins, and few have met the rigorous certification by Kia, Dodge, Infiniti, Chrysler, Jeep, Nissan, Hyundai, and many others. But it's one more reason that Martins is your right choice. Check online at martinscollision.com. On State Street in Orem and in Salem, we work with all insurance companies. The right repair, the right paint, the right choice. Martins Collision Repair. For the right repair and the right paint, the right choice is manufacturer-certified Martins Collision Repair. Hi, I'm Tiago Martins. Many shops have ASC and ICAR certified technicians, but few have certifications by General Motors, Nissan, Chrysler, Hyundai, Jeep, and many others, making Martins your right choice. Online at martinscollision.com, on State Street in Orem and in Salem, we work with all insurance companies. The right repair, the right paint, the right choice. Martins Collision Repair. IVC is celebrating 20 years providing quality service in Utah. You've probably heard their saying by now, life starts when the pain stops. IVC is the most trusted interventional and vein center in the state, and they've been voted best of Utah Valley 10 years running. The seven physicians at IVC provide state-of-the-art, comprehensive vein care with many years of experience. The team at IVC takes the time to get to know you and your veins, so you're comfortable with the right diagnosis and the right treatment. Patients are like family at IVC. You've also heard many radio ads over the years with real people describing how IVC has dramatically improved their quality of life by eliminating the pain and discomfort caused by varicose veins. Well, what are you waiting for? Don't let vein disease slow you down even one more day because life starts when the pain stops. Visit iVane.com today to set up a free screening. That's iVane.com. 79 missionaries trapped in penniless inside Germany borders with war days away. From director T.C. Christensen comes Escape from Germany in theaters now. Tickets at EscapeFromGermany.com. Get ready for spring with the Greenhouse Show and Advanced Window Products. Affordable windows sold direct to the public at 3052 South, 460 West from 8 to 11. The Greenhouse Show, this Saturday. With the three things you need to know this hour, I'm Dan Bonas. First, police have cleared the science building and they're working on clearing other buildings on the campus of Southern Utah University to make sure it's safe. After a report of shots fired on campus, police have now confirmed that there were in fact no shots fired. Second, people in Panguitch were told yesterday that the situation at the Panguitch Lake Dam is improving. Still a lot of concern. Third, Ted Wilson, the former mayor of Salt Lake City, has passed away at the age of 84. Right now, we're at 56 degrees and sunny in Salt Lake City. Back to Dave and Dujanovic on KSL News Radio. Dave, Dave and Dujanovic. Dujanovic. Just spotted this on social media. Excuse me, it is um, posted online. $10,000 reward offered for information on a Utah bald eagle shooting. And it's issued by the Center for Biological Diversity. They made the announcement today of a $10,000 reward for information leading to a conviction for illegal shooting of a bald eagle in the Cedar City, Utah area. We're going to get more information in just a moment about this uh, when we speak live to uh, Chad Betteridge, who is a law enforcement officer with the Utah Division of Wildlife Resources. This is the nation's bird. This is a beautiful thing. I, in fact... As a whitewater rafting guide, I had a lot of different opportunities uh, to see bald eagles flying over the Snake River, down uh, Westwater Canyon. There were a a couple of eagles that just spent a lot of time there for years, for years and years. Mm -hmm. And it was always a, a majestic, beautiful thing. What I didn't realize is the punishment if you do shoot... A bald eagle. Now, this is a $10,000 reward. That is nothing in comparison to the fine that people could be facing. Good. Good. $100,000 fine for an individual, $200,000 fine for an organization. I think they could even double or triple that in both aspects. And then up to, what is it, up to a year in prison. Uh, This has been our nation's symbol since uh, 1782. Um. Then there was a story, uh, maybe back in the 60s, of a story of bald eagles getting poisoned. This is according to this press release. 
by pesticides. Oh, was it DDT? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They were trying to kill mosquitoes. It ended up getting into the fish. The eagles would eat the fish, and yeah. then it weakened the eggs of the eagles. So then they were, they were listed, one of the first species listed under the um, what was a precursor to the Endangered Species Act. Why in the world would anybody shoot a bald eagle? I thought if I, I feel like this is intentional. Uh, it wasn't an accident, right? Because usually they're in a nest or in the sky. I've never seen, I rarely see a bald eagle to begin with. Right. Uh, but but you know, you just the, it's illegal to do this kind of stuff. So it's just illegal. Don't you know if you don't ignorance of the law is no excuse. Don't shoot a bird. Do we get do we get the law? Do we get uh, DWR on the line there, Caitlin? Oh, we're trying to get we're trying to get him patched through right now so we can talk to him. One thing. I remember growing up, it was because bald eagles were endangered. So we were trying to protect them from going extinct. But what I learned recently is that they were taken off the Endangered Species Act. Now, back in the, the, I think it was the 40s or the 50s, that's when the numbers plummeted after the DDT scandal, I guess is is how you could describe it, uh, poaching. But there are a lot of restrictions when it comes to bald eagles. In fact, something I learned, Debbie, if you were to find, if you were just hiking out in the wilderness and you were to come upon a bald eagle that had died and it was just laying right there Mm -hmm. in in the middle of the trail, you can't even harvest their feathers. Why would you? It is. Well, they're they're beautiful. Yeah. Right? They're they're beautiful (laughs) feathers. Uh, But you, you can't. I mean, we go shed hunting all the time, you know, where people are picking up antlers, uh, you know, after after the hunting season. So you are not even allowed to collect the feathers. Mm-hmm. They very very restrictive. Yeah, and if you do and you get caught, there's a hundred thousand dollar fine, probably up to a hundred thousand fine and up to one year in prison if you do it. But I think that a bunch of fools out there would run around and pick on birds, particularly bald eagles, if they knew they could make. And by the way. You collect the feathers because they're beautiful. Now they're going to collect them because they want to turn around and sell them. Um, and so they nobody should be making money off of killing animals. Don't you have to have a hunting tag anyway if you're going to go hunting? So, if, you know, you're not going to get a hunting tag yeah. for a bald eagle. So this is totally illegal. There should be a stiff penalty. It sends the right message. I think it should even be... Um, more money than that, they should spend up to five years in prison. Wow! Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna pick you're gonna pick on animals, you're gonna pick on birds, and you're gonna do it illegally. You're gonna have to pay the price. Did we get the phone call patched through, guys? We're having some technical problems. I'll tell you what. Why don't we do this? Oh, we've got a full eleven o'clock hour lined up. We know we've got Greg Scordis calling in from the Chad Daybell trial in Boise. Um, we've also got, um, other stories developing as well throughout the show. Um, James Curry, professor at the University of Utah, joining us on the latest developments with House Speaker Mike Johnson to talk about, um, whether, he, uh, how, how long, uh, that he's got in that top chair back in Washington, D.C. with Marjorie Taylor Greene and others, uh, vi- you know, vying to kick him out of the speaker's chair as well. Let's do this. Let's step away. Let's take a moment. Let's reset what we need to reset uh, in the control room there and see if we can't get uh, the captain with uh, Utah Division of Wildlife Resources on the line with us to actually talk about the reward, the punishment, why bald eagles are protected, and to your point, Dave, why somebody can't just walk up and start plucking their feathers off them after they're dead and limp on the ground. We've also got the NHL uh, story that is still developing that we will continue to track throughout the show. And we have former Speaker of the Utah House, Brad Wilson, who is currently running for U.S. Senate, running for uh, Mitt Romney's seat back in the Senate. He will be joining us live at 1135. Dave had a question about the national debt. So we're going to ask him to get specific about his plans to deal with that massive amount of debt that we cannot keep up with. KSL FM Midvale. KSL Salt Lake City. From the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios, this is KSL News Radio. Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. 
It's 11 o'clock at KSL News Radio. I'm Dan Bomas. KSL's top story this hour police in Cedar City still clearing buildings on the campus of Southern Utah University. They're making sure the buildings are secure after a report of shots fired earlier today. Authorities now say there were no shots fired, but a lockdown protocol is still in place. Members of the International Olympic Committee are touring some of the proposed venues for the Games uh, uh, this week. UTA Executive Director Jay Fox says the committee members seem impressed with our transit system after a tracks ride on Wednesday. I mean, I think they wanted to know how we integrated with, uh, with our road network. They wanted to know how we integrated with bus and commuter rail. And I talked about our central facilities and um, certainly the good work of our planning people to make sure that people have seamless transitions on our network. Committee members will be in town until Saturday. O.J. Simpson, the college and professional football star, has died. Simpson was acquitted in the murders of his wife, Nicole, and another man in 1994. Then years later, he was convicted on a robbery charge in Nevada, wound up serving nine years in prison. Simpson was 76. Your money at this moment, the Dow Jones average uh, down on the day 115 points, while the NASDAQ is up 114. And we have sunshine uh, today, tomorrow, the next day. That's coming up. KSL News Time, 11 Here's a way to get breaking news updates anywhere you go. At the store or in a work meeting, you can get breaking news on your phone. You can quickly read it, swipe, or click for more. It's super discreet, super fast. That's the app for KSL News Radio. Ah, springtime in Utah, and if you hate to paint, do what your neighbor Judy did. She called Rhino Shield. After having the house painted with kind of usual house paint, I was seeing cracks appearing about every three years and just wasn't very satisfied with that. Rhino Shield ceramic technology is formulated for our unique climate here in Utah and is Class 1 fire rated. I can't speak highly enough about the Rhino Shield crew. They also were great at working with me to get the exact right color because I was very particular. Utah, you too can have the 25 year guaranteed protection of Rhino Shield for 15% off the regular price. I would not hesitate to call Rhino Shield, and I am just thrilled to recommend Rhino Shield to my friends and neighbors and family. This offer is limited. Call 435-246-4466, 435-246-4466, or rhinoshieldwest.com. This Friday from 10 to 1, the movie show comes to Sound Sleep Medical. But first... Take the time to learn about a better night's rest. Sound Sleep Medical delivers oral appliance therapy that treats sleep apnea without the use of CPAP machines. They're professionally fit, warrantied, and covered by most major medical insurance. In the days of a poor night's sleep, Sound Sleep Medical will help. Call Sound Sleep Medical at 801-716-8672 for details. Sound Sleep Medical. Looking for a secure retirement plan without market risk? Look no further. Lyle Boss, president of Boss Financial, specializes in no market risk retirement strategies with guarantees of principal, guaranteed growth, and lifelong income. Join Lyle right here each Saturday and Sunday for his Safe Money radio show and call him now at 855-355-SAFE for your complimentary customized Safe Money information kit and Safe Money book. Nothing but upside here at 855 855- 355 SAFE. This heat's nice, but the real heat, it's coming. What's up, everybody? I'm Mike Wilson with Any Hour Services, and now is a great time to schedule a preseason AC tune up. And I'm about to save you some money. Normally, we charge $129 to tune up your air conditioner, but if you call today, Thursday, April 11th, and mention you heard this ad, we'll give you $100 off and tune up your air conditioner for only $29. Call Any Hour Services today and schedule 801 443 7400. Manufacturers recommend annual maintenance to save on utility bills, identify breakdowns before they happen, and to help your air conditioner last for as many years as possible. 801-443-7400. If it's more convenient, go to anyhourservices.com and look for the red button that says Book Online. Schedule your $29 tune-up there. That's a $129 value for only $29. If you get a hold of us today, call Any Hour Services right now at 801-443-7400. Google Any Hour Services or schedule online at anyhourservices.com. Traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's DinoPay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. 
Here's Heather Kelly. We've got a problem-free commute right now, especially on the major freeways across the Wasatch Front. No delays on I-15, the east or west side belt routes, or the 201 freeway. I am seeing just a little bit of slowing on Bangor Highway. That is as you head south through Harriman, Riverton area, and then make that curve that'll turn east toward I-15. But that's just people slowing down for a traffic light. Heather Kelly in the KSL Traffic Center. Sunshine today with highs in the low 70s and a few clouds tomorrow and Saturday with highs in the upper 70s. And right now we're at 59 degrees with sunny skies. I'm Dan Bomas from the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. Listen online at kslnewsradio.com. We're Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Dave and Dejanovic, your morning companions for talk, analysis, and key perspectives on Utah's biggest stories on KSL News Radio. The trial of Chad Daybell. Special coverage on KSL News Radio. Our legal analyst Greg Scordis um, has been in Boise covering the trial of Chad Daybell, and in my read of his lengthy uh, notes that he sent back to the station last night, I was sitting at home reading them, and I felt as though. Um, my takeaway was that the prosecution's opening statements weren't quite as strong as they should have been, as they could have been, weren't as impressive maybe on the jury. Uh, but Greg's going to get with us in just a moment and give us his full take. One thing that stood out to me was that Chad, when when the bodies were initially found, jumped into his car and attempted to flee, and, and then he stopped. I there are, and this is what's happening. We're starting to learn more about the details. And quite frankly, there are some excruciating details and very grisly to listen to. Um, but it, I think it speaks to just how horrific these these murders were. Greg Scordis uh, joining us live on the line. He's our KSL legal analyst covering this trial. These two beautiful children, Tylee. Uh, Ryan and J.J. Vallow uh, found um, buried in Chad Daybell's backyard. Of course, Chad married to their mother, Lori Vallow, who was convicted, uh, serving time in prison, uh, now down in Arizona, yet awaiting yet another trial in another case. Um, so uh, it sounded to me from your notes, Greg, that maybe the prosecution missed the mark with opening statements. Yeah, I may have overstated that a little bit. I was just uh, kind of disappointed um, with their just their delivery and and whatnot. But I, I think they have a solid case. I think it was a fair um, opening statement. Uh, I, I just the, the they sort of spoiled me at Lori's case because the prosecution statement there was a little more compelling, and I expected the same. They had some glitches with their microphone. They had glitches with their with their PowerPoint. And um, it just kind of fizzled at the end. Uh, but I think they, they did the job that they needed to do. I think it was adequate. And, um, you know, I, I'm, and they've certainly started out of the shoot very well with their first witness, who is the, the lead detective in the case. What stood out to you as the, the lead detective was walking the jury through what had happened? Um, I thought it was really a good, uh, Dave. Last time we started with uh, – uh, Kay Woodcock, uh, sort of because she had initiated the investigation and reported reported Tylee missing. In this case, we, we started with the detective, and he has been walking through the investigation. I mean, just recently, just a few minutes ago, he started going through the autopsy photos of, of little JJ. Oh, my, my word. It was just, it was gut-wrenching. They didn't publish them, thankfully, except that the jury was able to see them privately, but you could tell he was struggling with that. The detective was. You could tell that that even even uh, I think there were several of the jurors who looked to be tearing up. You know, it was it's it's been a tough it's been a tough morning uh, because of what we're hearing right now, which is really going into the details of the of the the bodies being found. He's been cross examined or at least questioned by the, uh, Chad's defense attorney. Not yet. He's been okay. questioned. He's asked him a few questions about lengths and foundation for some photographs. But no, I, I don't even know if they're going to get to that today. This is going incredibly slow. Uh, and tomorrow is an off day. So we'll see if he even gets to that cross-examination of the detective today. How has the jury been reacting to what they're seeing? What are your thoughts on that? You know, the judge gave them uh, a 
pad of paper and pencil, and they've been writing things down. And so that's been interesting to me to watch them uh, at the times that they'll write things down. It kind of gives you an impression of what they are finding to be important. I think they're attentive. They're, they're certainly listening. Today's a lot more interesting than yesterday. Opening remarks are never that interesting. But uh, they've been sitting up and listening to Detective Hermosillo today and seem to be liking his testimony, listening to it intently, and, and feeling, like, feeling like he's doing a very confident job. Greg, you were describing that the defense had to, or they seem to have a problem with some of the exhibits or every photograph that was popping up. Can you walk us through what was going on with the defense? Yeah, at the crime scene, the de- there were a lot of photographs taken, and the defense was concerned about whether or not the detective actually took the photographs. And of course, those of us that practice law know that that's not a threshold question. It doesn't matter who took the photographs. Yeah. The question is if they're accurate. And the prosecution would say, are these accurate? He'd say, yeah. Then the defense would say, well, who took them? Who was present? Uh, How many people were there? And stuff that I thought was just clouding the issue because they're going to come in. They're going to be admissible. And the prosecution laid the appropriate foundation. So I I thought it was made it very tedious and time consuming that he was jumping in and asking the witness questions in the middle of the examination. Well, I heard some of that, and I thought, uh, great delay tactic. I'm sure that's about all it was. Um, But it... it Look, I mean, if they if they brought in, you know, Joe, who runs the ice cream shack down the road to take the photographs, maybe they would have had some sort of foundation there. But this is probably an evidence tech who works for the police department or perhaps the FBI had their photographer. in. I don't know for sure, but it's somebody within the law enforcement realm that steps in to take these photographs, uh, from my experience, and covering crime for 30 years. So... You know, I I thought he was trying to, like, create a Perry Mason moment over that that just failed. Yeah, it miserably failed. And you're exactly right. It doesn't matter who took the photographs. And it was law enforcement. It was just one of his partners who was doing that part of it while he was gathering evidence. So uh, one detective can't go into a crime scene like this, especially with a a four-and-a-half-acre plot of land with, uh, with, you know, basically a grave site on it. And, and expect to do all of the work, including the photographs. So, yeah, they were admissible. They're coming in, and they did come in. And I think it just it drew unnecessary attention to them. I think it sort of backfired on the defense to, to fight that, and then the jury getting it and wondering why he's working so hard to keep it out of evidence. How does the judge react to what almost feels like a misdirection? Is there a lot of patience from judges when this kind of stuff happens? He's been incredibly patient, and he's been – He's been uh, listening to the defense arguments. I mean, they've had a ton of what they call sidebars where everybody sort of approaches the bench and they talk outside the presence of the jury. I mean, it's it's made it very tedious and very slow. My guess is the defense, and even today he sort of backed off a little bit. I think that that tactic isn't working. It'll slow down a little bit and it'll speed up the trial. And, and the judge has been patient with him so far, but the jury's not necessarily patient with that kind of approach. Do you, um, Greg, do you think that uh, who, I guess I could ask you who their next uh, witness is, do you know, and then how long do you feel like this trial is going to go? Boy, I'll tell you, we didn't have court Tuesday. We don't have court tomorrow. Ooh. Monday was basically a waste of a day. Friday was a My waste goodness. of a day. And so uh, this was supposed to be a 10 to 12 week trial. I think the judge is looking forward to making it every every day of that. Um, I think that we'll have more, to answer your first question, uh, we'll probably hear more law enforcement next week and and really, really get through that crime scene in a very detailed way. Greg Scordis, thank you for joining us. Uh, Thanks for giving us all the latest information on this case. I want to just bring you up to date on new information out of the uh, Iron County area, Cedar City, where we've been following this developing story all morning long about a lockdown regarding possible shots fired. We know that now... uh, SUU has come out and said there were no shots fired on campus. The police are still clearing buildings uh, from what we know at SUU. However, the Iron County School District now saying that they have lifted their lockdown on the schools, the public schools in that area, which was, you know, elementary up to high school, went on lockdown once this incident started going down um, at Southern Utah University.
So we're continuing to get good news uh, that uh, the situation is kind of tamping down there in the Cedar City area. Um, and we'll continue to monitor what comes out of Southern Utah University uh, for the latest. Straight ahead, Professor James Curry from the University of Utah, live on the line. We're going to ask him if uh, Mike Johnson has a good chance of staying Speaker of the House or Marjorie Taylor Greene and all of her antics win out. That conversation straight ahead. Dave and Dejanovic. A lot of us are filling our workdays with podcasts. When you're working, go to kslnewsradio.com. Click on Dave and Debbie's podcast and pick a topic and story length. Podcast with Dave and Debbie. Then get to work with KSL News Radio. When I grew up, I was around uh, my dad a lot, going to work with my dad occasionally. We uh, He worked with people in recovery uh, with alcohol and drug addictions, and I saw firsthand uh, from a very young age, the impact it had not just on the the folks in recovery, but the family around them as well. It's why I think Renaissance Ranch takes such a unique and powerful approach when you're dealing with addiction, and that is to get the family involved. Yeah, they offer these free family support services through their weekly online classes. These classes, as I said, They're totally free. They're open to the public. And here's even better news. You can attend as many of these open classes as you want to, as you need to. They are taught from a spousal perspective, uh, a parental perspective. They draw on their own experiences. Renaissance Ranch even offers a women's support group and a couple's recovery group. It's faith-based. They've clinically proven for more than 20 years. Uh, Renaissance Ranch has a commitment to treating the entire family. Uh, so you can check out these free online classes really easily. Yeah, more than a thousand attended last month alone. All you have to do is go to RenaissanceRanch.com to find these free online classes open to the public. It's at RenaissanceRanch.com. Ready to name an NHL team? This deal makes too much sense, and an announcement could come by the end of the season. Jazz owner Ryan Smith is warming up the home crowd with possible names for a hockey franchise. What's the future of the downtown? Hockey in Salt Lake City and Utah sports generally. Listen this week to KSL News Radio. Are you stressing about your IRS tax problems? Have you received notices from the IRS threatening to garnish your wages, levy your bank accounts, or seize your property? You need an ally. Allies Tax Relief has tax attorneys and enrolled agents that are ready to fight for you. They have saved millions for taxpayers just like you. Allies Tax Relief can help put a stop to IRS collections and most importantly, negotiate your tax debt. Here's Brenda, a happy client of Allies Tax Relief. I owed the IRS around $57,000, and they're about to start garnishing my paychecks. I heard a commercial on the radio about Allies Tax Relief, so I thought I'd give them a call. After a day, they were able to at least stop the garnishments, and after a few months of negotiations, I walked away owing the IRS only $301. If you owe the IRS, call Allies Tax Relief right now for your free consultation. Call 800-230-5174. 800-230-5174. That's 800-230-5174. 5174. Jazz fans, secure your seats for the next NBA season by getting season tickets. Season ticket members get special perks like team store discounts, savings on in-arena concessions, and more. Be there for every moment during the 2024-25 season by calling or texting 801-355-DUNK today. 801-355-DUNK. Let's go, Jazz. If there's a problem during your siding, gutter, or window installation project, most contractors will try to hide it, ignore it, or blame someone else. It's called passing the buck, or turning a blind eye, or my favorite, finger pointing. My question is, where is the accountability? Tim Jr. here from RGS Exteriors, and look, sometimes problems just happen, no matter who you hire. Maybe the wrong color siding gets delivered, despite the order being placed perfectly, or maybe a downspout gets cut short, Honestly, it could be anything. At RGS Exteriors, mistakes are rare. But if something goes wrong, I can absolutely, positively, 100% guarantee you we'll never hide it and we'll never pass the buck. We'll make certain everything turns out right for you. That's people over profits. That's the RGS Exteriors way. For a free estimate on siding, gutters, or windows, call 801-280-3110 
rgsexteriors.com, rgsexteriors.com. Start your hardscape project with Geneva Rocks Ready Mix Concrete. Ideal for patios, driveways, and sheds. Geneva Rocks Ready Mix Concrete is rock solid. Visit GenevaRock.com slash DIY. Great way to stay up to date on all of the breaking news, the latest stories. Just set push notifications on your new KSL News Radio app. The app is totally free to download. Of course, we are your station for all things breaking news. And when the big stories hit, you can be the first to be in the know just Again, sign up for the KSL News Radio app. It's totally free. Load it today on your smartphone and take a ride with us every single day right here at KSL News Radio. With the three things you need to know this hour, I'm Dan Bonas. First, police in Cedar City are still working to secure the campus of Southern Utah University after a report early this morning of noises that sounded like shots fired near the science building. They're now saying there were no shots fired. Second, members of the International Olympic Committee took a train ride yesterday as they looked over Utah's facilities for the Winter Games in 2034. And third, O.J. Simpson passed away at the age of 76. 59 degrees and sunny right now in Salt Lake City. And back to Dave and Dujanovic on KSL News Radio. Dave and Dujanovic. Marjorie Taylor Greene, uh, back in Washington, D.C., the congresswoman has made no mistake that she is going after House Speaker Mike Johnson. This is basically a warning, and it's time for us to go through, through the process, take our time, and find a new Speaker of the House that will stand with Republicans and our Republican majority instead of standing with the Democrats. The two of them met yesterday for an hour, and he offered her a seat on his... I'm going to say this with a straight face. His kitchen cabinet. Wait, I, I can't tell if you're you're joking or not. I, mean, I just, I'm reading this article <laughs> our producer sent to me. Uh, yeah, I met, he offered her an advisory role on his uh, newly formed kitchen cabinet, which would be, I guess, an advisory role to his speakership. Yeah, pr- pr- proposed a kitchen cabinet of advisors. Um, yeah, yeah. Johnson. That feels made to up. Green a spot on a proposed kitchen cabinet of advisors to the speaker after the nearly hour long session. But look, she she's she, you know she's not been happy with him for several weeks after he kept the government open. She wants him out. Yeah, Professor James Curry, Associate Professor of Political Science at the University of Utah, uh, is kitchen cabinet. Is that just <laughs> is that just made up for today? Um, yeah, for today. Okay. I mean, this is all he can really do in this sense, right? Because he cannot give her one of the formal like party leadership positions unilaterally, because that would have to be voted on in the conference and through the steering committee and all these things. So it's really the best he can offer her in on a one-on-one basis is that I'm going to include you in these meetings and in these discussions, and maybe that'll make you happy. Does she have um, a chance at, at getting him tossed? I, maybe. It's really hard to say. And it's also hard to tell if this is real or if it's just posturing. She introduced her motion to vacate not as a privilege re- resolution, which means she can't call it up on the floor anytime and force us into the chaos that Matt Gates forced us into in the fall. It would have to be referred to a committee and considered there, and then it's going to go nowhere. And that suggests to me that this is really just her firing a warning shot, which is what she said, and that it's really her posturing and trying to make get some headway out of this, which it seems like she is. Um, I think we'll know it's real if she refiles a motion to vacate as a privileged motion, because then it's probably imminent. Because it only takes one dissatisfied Republican to put this forth, right? This isn't like you need yeah. the majority of the Republicans to get on board. It, it can be just a, a Marjorie Taylor Greene. Yeah, if, it could be anyone. If they want to file it as privilege, then they can bring it up after 48 hours of filing it at any time. And then you have to consider it, which is what privileged means in the context of the House of Representatives. It means it can be forced to be considered at any time and so yeah they didn't change the rule as they some of them suggested that they were going to after the chaos in the fall um and now here we are again and as the republicans only have a one vote majority what happens uh i mean how how does this play out if if it's if she's the lone holdout 
if she's the lone holdout and everyone votes, then he's a, a he. I mean, he'd have to play to is everyone absent, is everyone present? But even if she's the only one who would vote to vacate along with all the Democrats, um, it would be tied. I don't know what um, happens with the tie. <laughs> with the tie, it has to something has to have a majority to pass, so the tie fails. Oh, okay. It's not like baseball, where tie goes to the runner, tie goes to the defense. Um, so, but if someone's absent, if anyone else goes along with it, you know, then we're right. We're back to having no speaker of the house, and back to having to go through all these things again. Now, the only way that he'd get saved in that situation is if the Democrats support him. But just as before. It's hard to say whether any Republican Speaker of the House would want to be saved by the other party, because then you essentially lose your role as a partisan leader and you're just a kind of a clerk. What's your view on how he's been as a speaker? By the way, this is Professor James Curry with the University of Utah, often a guest of the show when we talk about things back in D.C. because of your understanding of how Congress works. But what's your take on, on how he's been doing as speaker? You know, I think he's done as well as anyone could be expected to do under the circumstances. Uh, he, clearly, he had a lack of experience with this. Clearly, he's learned a lot about how to try to do this. But you're dealing with a situation where the Republican conference has fewer, seemingly a smaller majority every week, where there's clearly really deep divisions, not like down the middle of the party, but significant enough when you have a slight majority to make doing anything that's even remotely controversial in your own party virtually impossible. He seems to have I realized the same thing that Kevin McCarthy and Paul Ryan and John Boehner realized, which is you can't push something that only Republicans like because Republicans can't agree. So you have to push something that both some Republicans and some Democrats would like if you want to do anything. And what that means he's in the same position that John Boehner and Paul Ryan and Kevin McCarthy are in. In that now you have this faction of his party who detests him and is unhappy with him. But I'm not sure there's any other alternative. And who would want to throw their hat in the ring? We, we even saw that the last go around. People were like, I'll try. Never mind. I'm out. I yeah. don't want to be considered. The, it would be the same. I, I, I think it's clear that Representative Steve Scalise, the majority leader, still would like to be speaker someday. And I'm Maybe you would try. It's, I think Representative Jim Jordan still wants to be speaker. Do you try? But these are members that were both rejected last time around. So there certainly isn't someone else waiting in the wings. There's no one waiting in the wings, which is why this would be just, you know, somehow even worse than last time, because that last time should have demonstrated to everyone that this, there is no positive outcome from going through this. Professor Curry, I, I just... I just continue to feel like Republicans have this really great opportunity uh, leading up to the election to, you know, pretend like they get along, act like they get along, uh, stop fighting over the little things and get behind uh, Speaker Johnson. Um, but I'm not mm -hmm. sure they're going to get there. It, they, it's no. been years of this. Yeah, and I think the reality is that better than 90 percent of them agree with you and would see it exactly that way. But the problem is when you have a one-seat majority, a two-seat majority, is that it only takes a handful to really disrupt that effort and disrupt that approach to trying to govern and trying to present yourself as reasonable for the 2024 election. And that's exactly what's happening. And I think the argument that Speaker Johnson makes is, is compelling in the sense that we could ram something through the House – but there's mm -hmm. no chance it's getting through the Senate, and it's certainly not going to get through the president's desk. So why mm -hmm. pass some of these more bombastic initiatives? That's right. And and a lot of some of these things they're dealing with now are things that most Republicans want. Most Republicans do support some form of aid to Ukraine. They just you know they're di they're specifics. They differ from the Democrats on specifics, but it's accomplishable. Most Republicans want to reauthorize the FISA authorities. Uh, and so it's not as if Republicans don't want to do any of these things writ large, and so they're avoiding it because they don't want to give Democrats what they want. Most Republicans want some form of this, but there's a subset that do not want to do any of these things by negotiating with Democrats. But the problem is when the other party, when the Democrats control two-thirds of the government, you kind of have to. Well, we appreciate you joining us. Jim Curry, who's a professor of political science at the University of Utah. Thanks. We're going to keep our eyes focused on Washington, D.C. when we invite uh, U.S. Senate candidate Brad Wilson 
to call in next. Uh, Dave, I know you've been wanting to talk about the U.S. debt clock, so I just clicked on it. Woo! I don't even know if I can uh, translate this. So many 30, zeros. $34 trillion, $645 billion, $323 million, $160. I mean, it's going up so fast, I can't even keep track of it. What's the number one thing that you want to know from Senate candidate Brad Wilson? So how do we pay it off? It's 1130 at KSL News Radio. I'm Dan Bomas. KSL's top local story this hour. The Iron County School District has lifted the lockdown on its schools in Cedar City, while police are still working to secure the campus of Southern Utah University. Buildings there were locked down after a report of noises that sounded like gunshots near the science building this morning. That turned out to be unfounded. Police confirmed there were no shots fired on the campus. Rexburg Police Detective Ray Hermosillo continued his testimony this morning in the murder trial of Chad Daybell. Hermosillo testified that Daybell and his wife's brother, Alex Cox, lied to him about where J.J. Valla was. That led to police getting a search warrant for Lori Daybell's apartment in Rexburg. The bodies of J.J. and his sister, Tylee Ryan, were found later buried on Chad's property in Rexburg. Longtime former Salt Lake City Mayor Ted Wilson has passed away. KSL News Radio's Tammy Kukuchi has more. The family of Mayor Ted Wilson shared that he passed away early this morning at the age of 84. He had congestive heart failure and Parkinson's disease. He's described as an eternal optimist who loved people who loved him back. Wilson worked as a staff member for Congressman Wayne Owens and served as mayor of Salt Lake City during the city's transition from commission to a council form of government in the 70s. He was also the Democratic nominee for governor in 1988. He was also the head of the Hinckley Institute of Politics at the University of Utah for several years. And Ted Wilson surrounded by his family when he passed away today. Your money at this moment, the Dow Jones average... uh up now on the day, 14 points. The NASDAQ is up 209 right now. And our KSL weather, sunshine, temperatures uh, up into the 70s. That's next. KSL News, I'm 1132. News doesn't just mean information or dates. It's the story of our local history being told in real time. Be a part of the story. This is Tim Hughes and Amanda Dixon. We hope to be a part of your story. We have you covered on KSL News Radio. I know it's Thursday, but give me 60 seconds and I'll explain how spending $29 guarantees your air conditioner won't break down this summer or we'll give you your money back. What's up, everybody? I'm Mike Wilson with Any Hour Services, and when you have Any Hour do the annual maintenance for your air conditioner, it comes with our no breakdown guarantee 801 443 7400. Normally, we charge $129 to tune up your air conditioner, but not today. If you call today, Thursday, April 11th, and mention you heard this ad, we'll give you $100 off and tune up your air conditioner for only $29. 801 443 7400. If your AC breaks down any time this summer after we've tuned it up, we'll dispatch a technician to your home to diagnose and troubleshoot your system for free, and we'll give you back the $29 you paid for the tune up. Where else are you going to find an offer with this little risk? You literally get your money back if your air conditioner breaks down. Call any hour services and schedule your $29 air conditioner tune-up. 801-443-7400. You can Google any hour services. You can even schedule online at anyhourservices.com. It's going to be here before you know it. Here comes the summer. Like a way to so the weight loss wants to help you look amazing in your swimsuit and shorts, but you got to get started right now at SodaWeightLoss.com. No time? Try Soda's at-home program with all the support you need online. I didn't realize how unhealthy I was. When you start losing the weight, even that first five pounds, this enormous amount of confidence starts to build in you. You start to realize like, oh, this is possible for me. That's Lauren, and she's let go of 35 pounds with soda. With their help, I let go of 37 pounds, and I've kept it off for over two years now. That's because soda works. It's absolutely changed my life. Soda helps you break food addictions and get healthy for the rest of your life. It's why they have more than 8,700 Google reviews and countless before and after pictures and videos of people living the results every single day. Go to SodaWeightLoss.com. That's S-O-T-A WeightLoss.com. Every business faces challenges, but complicated, expensive, and uncertain shipping shouldn't be one of them. 
With USPS Ground Advantage from the United States Postal Service, you can avoid all the noise. No more unexpected surcharges, hidden fees, or complex rate structures. It's just easy, cost-effective, and dependable shipping. Tune your business's frequency to success and turn shipping to your advantage. Learn how at usps.com slash advantage. USPS Ground Advantage. Simple, affordable, reliable. Tax Talk with Straight Talk. You give and you give. This tax season you get with Straight Talk Wireless. You get a reliable 5G network and unlimited data and a new Samsung Galaxy A15 for just $99. So you can give your janky phone to your kid. Yeah! Good talk. Switch to Straight Talk for plans starting as low as $25 a line per month for four lines. Find us at Walmart and straighttalk.com. For network management practices, visit straighttalk.com. Device offer ends 41424. In-store activation on single silver unlimited plan or higher required. Family plan discount with four lines all on the silver unlimited plan. Taxes and fees apply. And with the three things uh, you need to know this, well, uh, with traffic and weather together, brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app, save up to 20 cents per gallon. Here's Heather Kelly. We've got good speeds all across the Wasatch Front. No delays on I-15 throughout Utah, Salt Lake, Davis, and Weber counties, either northbound or southbound. If you're heading east and west, you'll also have a good drive on I-80 and the 201 freeway. And city streets are in pretty good shape as well. The best kept secret is this is the pass. It's a pass for fun for everyone. Now through April 30th, save $20 off every annual pass level. 362 days of fun. Visit thisisthepass.com. Heather Kelly in the KSL Traffic Center. Our KSL weather sunshine today. Highs in the low 70s. A few clouds tomorrow and Saturday. Highs rising into the upper 70s. And right now, 63 degrees with sunshine. I'm Dan Bomas from the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. Listen online at kslnewsradio.com. We're Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. We're still tracking that developing story that we've been reporting all morning long out of Southern Utah University in Cedar City, where the school went on lockdown with reports of potentially uh, shots fired in the College of Science buildings. Good news there is that the buildings have been cleared. The school has uh, kept us up to date, uh, kept the whole community up to date as well, uh, saying that they've confirmed that no shots were fired um, and we're not aware of, uh, you know, any new developments since uh, they last posted that about an hour ago. However, unless you're, Dave, you look like you're on the site over there. Have they posted any new um, emergency alerts? No, the latest okay. one was updated maybe 15 minutes ago okay. saying buildings are still being searched and cleared by law enforcement. Uh, we do know that the Iron County School District also list, lifted the lockdown in the community for other surrounding public schools from elementary to high school as well in the last hour. want to let you know that our producers uh, behind the scenes working feverishly to bring us a uh, live news conference that we expect to happen with Southern Utah University in about 10 minutes from now. Uh, so hope to learn a lot more about what happened down there today. They actually at one point put out a full description of somebody that they uh, asked uh, the faculty and also students to be on the lookout for. Um, we don't know whatever became of that. So lots of questions there. SUU uh, has been, I think, very, from this perspective, very vigilant about getting information out, and they will continue to feed us information uh, during that news conference in about the next uh, 10 minutes. Uh, for now, though, we want to turn our attention to the national debt. Um, and a few minutes ago, I said, I don't even know if I can sort through this debt clock, but it's like $34 trillion. Six hundred forty-five billion, three hundred thirty-nine million, and the crazy thing is, is that it's moving so quickly. Man, if this had been a slot machine, I would have felt like I won the. Yeah, it's <laughs> I was one of those rich. progressive slots. It's insane. Yeah. Um, yeah, we just flipped over. I mean, it's just growing and growing and growing by the by the second. And the interest that we're having to pay on this national debt is quickly approaching nearly a trillion dollars a year. Insane. Like, let that settle in. That's a trillion dollars that is not going into programs or into taxes or tax cuts, whatever it might be. It's become monumental. And you hear politicians talk about this so often. So I'm excited to hear what Senate candidate Brad Wilson has to say about this, former Speaker of the House here in Utah. Uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to narrow our conversation down a little bit because I've heard you speak about this often about the national debt, the crisis. What I wonder, though, is, okay, well, 
How do we address it? How do we fix it? Yeah, thanks for having me on. And I will just tell you, first of all, that in St. George today, it's 70 degrees and there's not a cloud in the sky. <laughs> it's beautiful down here. So, it looks pretty good uh, up here, too. Yeah, campaigning down here today. Oh, uh, good. good. Well, isn't it a shame? Isn't it a shame that uh, we now have a national debt that is $34.5 trillion for every man, woman, and child in America? Our share of that's over $100,000 each. And yeah. Uh, it needs to be tackled. And the first thing that has to happen is spending has to be uh, put under control. You know, in Utah, we didn't just balance our budget every year, but for the last four years, we balanced our budget and cut taxes. And when you are fiscally healthy, uh, you can do those kinds of things. But because of the out of control spending in Washington, uh, because they don't have a requirement to balance their budget, they don't. And we've seen this and there's just no discipline back there. And the honest truth is everything in Washington needs to be on the chopping block in terms of, of cuts. Every department, uh, everything we spend money on needs to be reduced. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to resolve this this problem. Um, Senate candidate Brad Wilson live on the line with us right now. We're talking specifically about the national debt. It's gotten so out of control. There's been just so much media coverage on this. Um, and I, I feel like it's a family budget as well. I mean, like that's how we do our family budget, right? We put everything on the table and everybody has to take a look at what we're spending money on and say, okay, I'm willing to cut this much, um, for my spending and it's a negotiation, but where do you start with that? Because I'm hearing people who are collecting Social Security right now in my head and saying, well, no, not Social Security. Well, no, no, not Medicare, not Medicaid. Um, where do we begin? Well, you know, we, we can't begin by cutting benefits to people that are already retired on Social Security. That has to be off. And those that are with in just a few years of retiring, that has to be off the table, too. But you are right, Amanda. No, you're not Amanda Deb. Sorry. I want to uh, be Amanda. Are, so. Every morning, yeah, no. I want to be Amanda. When I listen to Amanda's voice on the radio, I want to be Amanda Dixon. Yeah. But go ahead. Uh, I'm she, Deb to you. You can call up, me Deb. She has to get up earlier than you. I know. <laughs> I know. Um, so, it, but you, you brought up Medicaid. You know, uh, while I was Speaker of the House, I'll bet you we we submitted six to eight waivers for Medicaid so that the state of Utah could spend that money more wisely, get better outcomes, and spend less taxpayer dollars. And they're always denied by the federal government. Uh, giving the states more influence and control over this money, you would see dramatic cuts in spending and better results. I mean, I'll give you a small example. There's a welfare program called TANF. It's a program that people get a check every week uh, that are low income. I passed a bill when I was a lawmaker that those individuals have to pass a drug test and they have to go get a job application done every week. People in Utah on that program are on it half the length of time the national average is. Common sense solutions like that that we have in Utah just need to be applied to the rest of the country and you could quickly get a lot of this spending under control. Once you I guess that's such a big if is once you get the the spending under control. Let's just say hypothetically we're able to stop spending. Then what happens? We're still 35 trillion in debt. I I guess the question is you, you love tax cuts, you have a, a huge record of tax cuts. Would you be willing to even increase taxes to help pay off some of that debt? You know, what's interesting is you can see almost a direct correlation in Utah between tax cuts here and our economy growing at a record amount. And it's because people want to live in Utah. Businesses want to locate in Utah. They want to grow their employer bases in Utah. And, and I believe actually that the worst thing you could do in this country in terms of sparking economic prosperity is raise taxes. But you could do what we did in Utah. It was just over a decade ago that we were almost 90% of our constitutional debt limit in Utah. The state is now about 20% of its constitutional debt limit in Utah. We have some of the lowest debt in the country, and it's just because we focused on growing the economy, keeping government small, and then paying down our debts quickly. And that's the kind of discipline that we need in Washington. But I honestly think the folks back there, they don't understand the basic premise of that, given how much spending they're doing every, every year. They love their deficit spending, no question. Uh, I keep wanting to say former House Speaker. Uh, 
You are the former House Speaker, Brad Wilson, but now the Senate candidate. Uh, Thank you so much for joining us for this very specific and and focused conversation. Thank you for talking about the national debt. Yeah, appreciate it. Uh, Enjoy uh, St. George. Say hi to my friends down there. Uh, They've been (laughs) enticing me to get down there in this great weather down in St. George. Uh, So good uh, to talk to you once again. Uh, Former House Speaker Brad Wilson, live on the line. He's told us in the past to call him Brad. Um, I never feel comfortable just like cutting past Hard to break a habit. Uh, next, uh, we got the phone lines working. Uh, if you were with us an hour ago, you know we were struggling just a bit with that. Um, so we either expect to have a, a live news conference wired in uh, to studio any minute from SUU. Um, and if that press conference is delayed, uh, just because they've been dealing with so much down there this morning regarding that uh, what we thought was an active shooter threat turns out that it, there were no shots fired and they are still clearing the buildings down there in, in Cedar City. So if that news conference happens in the next few minutes, we'll take you live. We're also going to get uh, looking forward to getting DWR live on the line regarding a shooting of a bald eagle in the Cedar City area and the fines that come with um, shooting bald eagles and other birds next. Dave and Dujanovic. You know KSL is the only news radio for your car, right? The only news radio for your smart speaker. Come here in the morning. It's the latest news and traffic. In the afternoon, news and updated weather. We have you covered at KSL News Radio. IVC is celebrating 20 years providing quality service in Utah. You've probably heard their saying by now life starts when the pain stops. IVC is the most trusted interventional and vein center in the state, and they've been voted best of Utah Valley 10 years running. The seven physicians at IVC provide state-of-the-art, comprehensive vein care with many years of experience. The team at IVC takes the time to get to know you and your veins so you're comfortable with the right diagnosis and the right treatment. Patients are like family at IVC. You've also heard many radio ads over the years with real people describing how IVC has dramatically improved their quality of life by eliminating the pain and discomfort caused by varicose veins. Well, what are you waiting for? Don't let vein disease slow you down even one more day because life starts when the pain stops. Visit iVein.com today to set up a free screening. That's iVein.com. Free. Who doesn't love free? With Milo's Rewards, you get the member-only treatment that's actually worth it. Enjoy free member gifts you'll love. And once you reach Silver Key status, you can get free standard shipping. Because Lowe's knows nothing feels better than free. Learn more about our new loyalty program at Lowe's.com slash Milo's Rewards today. Program subject to terms and conditions. See Lowe's.com slash terms for details. Member gifts may be subject to additional terms and restrictions. See Lowe's.com slash shipping terms for details. Subject to change. Thanks for calling Discover. This is Gabby. Hey, Gabby. It's Jennifer Coolidge. Hi. Um, I'm so glad I reached you at 2 a.m. Oh, of course. Anyone with a Discover card can call and talk to a real person 24-7. Now, how can I help? Yeah, I used my Discover card to buy these yellow pleather pajamas, and I'm just not sure I'm pulling them off. 24-7 U.S.-based customer service. It pays to Discover. Limitations apply. Learn more at discover.com slash credit card. Tim Hughes here celebrating 30 fantastic years with Greg and Mike at Replenish Compost. And uh, happy birthday, Greg. Why is Replenish Compost so enduring through all these years? Well, the number one thing is it works as a great soil amendment or also as a top dressing. Uh, It was something that was developed 30 years ago by Connie Cannon and Peter Lassick. And the nutrients in Replenish, Mike, really make a difference. You'll really notice a difference in your flowers and vegetables and whatever you put it in, how how well it does. And it's so satisfying after a long winter and, uh, you know, things dry out and they don't look so good, you can instantly get beauty with that Replenish. We have the one cubic yard bags, or we can deliver loose uh, in our dump trucks. Replenish for over 30 years, making Utah homes and gardens more beautiful one yard at a time. You're going to find them at 4660 South, 200 West in Murray. Call them at 801-262-5142 or look them up online at replenishcompost.com. Replenish, it's good stuff. Hey guys, do you know your tea level? Revive Men's Health here in Salt Lake City is helping you take that first step toward better health and enhanced intimacy with a free testosterone level test, exam, and consultation. Plus, for this month only, qualified patients can kickstart their treatment with a free supply of ED medication. 
Call Revive Men's Health Salt Lake City at 801-263-7777. That's 801-263-7777. Or visit revivemenshealth.com. This is Derek Miller speaking on business. According to the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, American health care spending reached $4.5 trillion We got a breaking story out of Southern Utah University. We want to jump to right away. There's a indiv- news conference that's being held right now. It looks like a police officer may very well be the police uh, chief down there in Southern uh, at Southern Utah University regarding what we thought was an active shooter situation on uh, campus kind of today. It turned out there were no shots fired. Let's listen. From here on out. And then uh, that's, that's what we have right now. Not yet. We're still we're still clearing buildings. We're still doing that process to ensure that we're not missing any. We're covering all aspects of what we need to do by protocol, by our policy and SU policy. Are you considering this a hoax at this time? Uh, at this time, it's an active investigation, so we are not sure. We're, we're not counting that. We're we're taking it seriously until we find out through our investigation that it was a hoax then we'll call it that but as of right now it's an active investigation and we are treating it as a active shooter based on that initial suspect description that was put out are are you still looking for in theory that person or don't know well we have that person but to be in a to for us to be an effective we have to look at everybody we have to look at all possible matching descriptions and as information comes in somebody says hey i saw somebody that looked like this but now they're wearing this, so we are looking at every possibility, not just that suspect that we, that may or may not be the person we're looking for. Have you found that person or not? We're, no, it's still active, so we're still looking. As soon as we clear all the buildings and we cover all, cover all our bases, then we'll, we'll see. Any other areas surrounding the campus also been put on lockdown? Uh, I am not aware of that. I know for SUU, that's, I don't want to say, but this is my main concern, and I'm sure the other agencies probably connected with the districts, but I'll leave that up to them to kind of answer that. Did something like this happen a year ago? Yes, we did have something, a similar incident happen about a year ago, a year and about five days. A year and five days? Yes, something like that. Is that unusual, weird or unusual? How does it feel dealing with this again? You know, it's uh, training the support to you. You're listening to a live news conference that is Chief of Police for Southern Utah University, Carlos Medina, addressing the media there uh, in Cedar City regarding what uh, we thought could be. And they posted uh, earlier today a potential for an active shooter down uh, at the SUU campus on campus. They then went in and cleared uh, the College of Science buildings. And found uh, there was actually, they haven't found anybody, they haven't taken anybody into custody, and that no shots are fired. Let's go back to that live news conference. We have such a good working relationship with other agencies that it makes it pretty fluid and easy, you know, given the circumstance, to to really do our job effectively. And not only that, help our SEU community, but also the citizens of Cedar City, that they know they have support. Yeah, just letting the parents know that the university has their own police department, and that's one big advantage. We are we are always actively looking out for the students and the staff and any visitors that come. And when incidents like that this happen, we are able to respond immediately, coordinate, and w- work within our policies and our abilities to make sure that all students, staff, visitors are protected. Not trying to put you uh, on the on the spot for an exact number. We have over two, I think over 20 buildings. I can't give you the exact number, that's just an estimate. But we have, we also have housing units, we have exterior buildings, and not only that, we're not so, we don't stay narrow. We also check, like we have uh, houses, apartment complexes around our jurisdiction. We would have to, we also keep that into account and uh, make sure that we help them also. One more question, and then we got to get them back to work. Or have kids here at the uh, child care facility at SUU. What's the status of those children? Do you know? We actually sent a team over there, cleared the building, and we are coordinating so they can pick up their children and leave safely off campus with uh, with their loved ones. 
All right. Thank you. you uh, you've been listening to a news conference out of Cedar City uh, that was uh, SUU, Southern Utah University's chief of police, Carlos Medina, addressing reporters and photographers down in that area regarding that uh, situation that happened was unfolding during our show today. But right now it appears that, you know, all is well down um, in Southern Utah University, and they're continuing to uh, investigate. They said there was no suspect in custody, but they did make that uh, connection, if you will, to this happening about a year ago as well. Kind of a similar situation uh, where he just had barely taken over as chief of police on April 1st of 2023. This happened a couple of days later. Um, and now not ready yet to confirm that this is uh, a hoax. But, however, uh, the investigation is ongoing. This is Derek Miller speaking on business. According to the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, American health care spending reached $4.5 trillion in 2022. As businesses, individuals, and households navigate rising health care expenses, a shift towards proactive health strategies is crucial. Julie Wild, founder of Transform with Wellness, joins us with more. Did you know that 90% of health outcomes are determined by modifiable behaviors and choices of diet, lifestyle, and environment? It's time to take action to improve your health for a better quality of life, regardless of your health status, and experience the power of elevated well-being. As a results-driven health coach with a corporate background, I'm passionate about empowering professional women on the journey to their best selves. From stress management to feeling and looking their best, I specialize in helping women with personalized health transformation programs, workplace wellness initiatives, and engaging speaking events. Discover possibilities and solutions for upgrading your health and supporting your employees' well-being. Whether you're seeking personal breakthroughs or looking for innovative ways to enhance workplace health, Transform with Wellness is here for you. Why wait? Reach out to me at julie at transformwithwellness.com or visit our website at transformwithwellness.com to get started today. Transform with Wellness's mission is to empower people to transform their lives by optimizing their health with a strong foundation of wellness. Visit their website to learn more. I'm Derek Miller with the Salt Lake Chamber, speaking on business. Any Hour Services free furnace sale is going on right now. If you haven't scheduled your free estimate yet, do it now. Call Any Hour Services today or schedule online at anyhourservices.com. Dave and Dujanovic. Dave and Dujanovic. Okay, it's the second day in a row where we've just had a lot of news breaking during our show. Um, we started with O.J. Simpson, Simpson's death uh, from from a uh, renowned football player to convicted felon uh, dead at the age of 76 from cancer. Um, of course, best known for not being convicted of the murders of his ex-wife and her friend, uh, Ron Goldman. Uh, then eventually served time, a significant amount of time behind bars for a armed robbery in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. And we also received news that former Salt Lake City Mayor Ted Wilson passed away at the age of 84. Yeah, of course, um, father to current Salt Lake County Mayor Jenny Wilson and um, our condolences uh, go out to her and her entire family. Um, the, new, the statement the family put out said that he was indeed surrounded by family as he passed away, suffering from congestive heart failure and also uh, Parkinson's disease. We have also learned that in southern Utah, SUU University uh, has not has, has found that there were not shots fired. There was a suspected or a uh, a thought that there was an active shooter. They had been dealing with that for the last several hours. They have announced that no shots were fired. They are still investigating this. This is still active, but there doesn't seem to be any immediate threat. If there was any good news in our show, it was that it does look like Salt Lake City is inching closer to getting an NHL team, uh, specifically Ryan Smith, the owner of the Utah Jazz. Uh, it appears from media reports that uh, deep in negotiations uh, to get the Arizona team, the Coyotes, uh, up to Utah is uh, starting season. Their season as early as October of this year. So uh, we expect an announcement. What is it, about T minus seven days at the latest? I've seen uh, seven days or after the NHL season is over, which takes us probably to June. So we'll see when the announcement happens. But if this were to happen, to get a team moved from Arizona to playing in Salt Lake City is a monumental movement. I would expect it sooner, a decision either way, sooner rather than later. 
Yeah, it'll change the face of downtown Salt Lake City, that is for sure. Maria Chaleos, next. KSL FM Midvale. KSL Salt Lake City.